live and we're live Hello. Hi, i'll cut that part out of the official youtube version <laughs> um anyway this is episode 20 of the game session podcast i'm your host jose slash seth rokage uh today we are joined by sarah and Corey. how are the two of you doing lovely Hello. i'm just i'm just lovely Let's see uh um, at the top of the show, I just want to go to remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on all the socials for everyone on here. Everyone's ads are on screen as well as available in any descriptions of wherever this goes up. Uh, Game Session mm-hmm. Podcast is filmed live on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can find it later on podcast services and on YouTube as both uh, the full podcast as well as individual cut up segments for easier digestion. Um, Corey and I twi- uh, stream on Twitch, so you can go ahead and find our schedules on our links. And Sarah is known for Disneyland antics, and also yeah, I mean, and also and, and writing articles on Movie yes. Phone. Yeah, I am. I, I Oh yeah, it's been two weeks. I yeah, am you're officially a published, published. You're a published Movie Phone author, a writer. Yay! I'm officially Yay. published. An author writer, one might say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's not going to be the only thing I do for them, by the way. That's that's Ooh. still being out but that's not the only thing i'm going to do secret so. secrets yeah. <laughs> yay. But yeah yeah thank you thank you guys for all your support this is a secret thing i've i've mentioned a couple times that i wasn't going to talk about because i was waiting for it to actually happen but now it's but, not a secret yeah. now you can talk about it as much it's as you want yeah. not a secret uh i guess really quick uh i did the top five m- movies of 2020 that would make really great video games so if you want to go check check that out uh the links in my twitter somewhere i tweet a lot it's probably buried to be to be fair holding a secret is like its own little kind of fun right yeah i mean it was really hard not to talk about it because i was choosing not to talk about it so i had something like tangible to actually show and the fact that it released on my birthday was even better got myself like a little birthday gift too which was super cool yeah (laughs) thank you guys for all for all for all the support uh for those who reached out to me excited a bunch of people reach out. I had a bunch of people re, re, retweet it, both on uh, Twitter, on face, Facebook as, as as well. It really meant a lot to me. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. We're proud of you, Sarah. We're so proud. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> I got paid! Yeah. Can we look forward to your next article, Top 10 Male Asses in Gaming? <laughs> God, I hope! Top 10 himbos in all of gaming. Yes. See, you now that's an easier list. I, I don't know why that made me suddenly remember that I'm binging all of NCIS and I forgot how much Bugly is just a fucking himbo and I'm just like, oh, great, here we go. <laughs> uh, before we go... Ahead, it's, a very, it's a very long story. Before we go ahead and jump in, I'm still relatively new to it, but uh, I do have a Patreon um, just if you want to help support the show, help support me. Uh, shout out to both Sly and Rama Nomad for being the first two patrons and uh, extremely close to making it to affiliate here on Twitch. I've met all the requirements except for the uh, what is it concurrent viewers need an average. I think was it like three or five something like that. But yeah, almost there. So that's very exciting. And so we don't have Blaine today. We don't have Mesa. We don't have our sanity. We never have that, though. That's okay. You only got us. You're stuck with us. <laughs> but this actually works quick, out. Quick, make this a Kingdom Hearts podcast. Go, oh, go, no. Go, go, go. No. Okay, so we're I talking hate about you. rocks. It's not. <laughs> oh, no. We're going to be here forever. Uh, but this is actually perfect because I don't know Blaine's level of interest in the medium. I know Mesa has said he's, he's semi interested in it, but now we can talk about it. We don't even necessarily have to get like super into spoilers or anything, but the idea was so the three of us are the ones are the three of us here on the show are the ones that have played it. Uh, Corey and I have both finished it. Sarah got to around the halfway points. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Delaby, for for following. Much appreciated. Um, But so yeah, the original plan was to have a little full on like spoiler cast, kind of similar to what we did for Cyberpunk for our thoughts, but. Um, when we kind of, uh, when I kind of gauge the interest in it through the podcast crew and just how people are progressing, the excitement was a little bit lower. Um, and I don't know, I kind of went into it thinking it was going to be like this cool, expansive story. We can talk about like all the nuances, but um, I won't give all my thoughts right now. But if, if, if I had to describe it, it was 
That's the way I want to put it. it it's very middle of the road. It's not something I'm extremely passionate about one way or the other. I felt uh, leading up to this conversation, I felt, you know, the the drive to want to talk about this game just as well did. as it just yeah, it's just because <laughs> just like the game, it's lackluster. Um, it's yeah, it's boring. It's I feel <laughs> like it's just there. Like, I feel like this game suffers from incredible. It's just i don't think it's bad like i think it's very well constructed i love the um the fixed camera angles i think it would have benefited from tank controls because there's times no, especially no no, 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 no no i i i disagree with you on that but uh, um like especially the chase sequences especially the chase sequences where you'd be like uh, running from the uh from the monster or whatever it's just like it does a complete 180 flip and now i'm just suddenly darting towards him like oh that's not good yeah that was, <laughs> that was just like the weird the, the weird control because like, like i don't know if anyone's played like old school silent hill two and three when it had the fixed camera angles and you would walk into the other side of the room and then it would switch the camera angles and you would walk back it, 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 the, the medium did that constantly and i wanted to throw my controller like i was just like it's like come on, like so many unnecessary deaths being chased by monstrous Troy Troy Baker because that is Troy Baker. Oh, I didn't know that. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. yeah. um, plays a few roles be, in that game. I feel like it could have benefited Troy, Troy, Troy Baker. I was just like, I do, and and the death scenes you can't skip that stupid like ten second cutscene that plays every time you die. It's, it's not that long, but games. yeah. Like, uh, it felt like 10 seconds. I was like, I get it. I'm having the life sucked out of it. Can I just leave? Can I just, like, restart? Like, I'm like, please. Mm -hmm. I, I will I... say, though, sorry, for how much hate I have towards it, it's, it was very refreshing to play a game where I didn't have to worry about combat all the time and just, like, focus on, like, doing puzzles and stuff. Like, I dug that because, obviously, like, you play games where you shoot, shoot, bang, bang all the, all the time. So it was nice to play a game where the only... I mean, even though the combat section combat sections were like running through a hallway full of moths and trying not to let monstrous Troy Baker chew at my face, mm -hmm. it was like th those were all annoying. The moth sections were dumb. Before like, I, it. I can use spirit powers, I don't care. <laughs> before I ask you why you're uh, maybe is maybe passionately hate it might be the word, but before I before I ask that before <laughs> but before we. Do but before we dive into that, um, I guess I want to lay the groundwork a little bit in terms of like story, gameplay. Um, I don't know, like like to me, the story was OK, like it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. And like, OK, maybe there's like the most controversial opinion that anyone's had about it, where like this, this game is like lauded as like as a Silent Hill ripoff. It's taking it's a pastiche, just taking the motifs. I don't think this is a Silent Hill game in any fucking way, shape, or form. Like maybe I have like maybe 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 I have completely high standards for like what Silent Hill is, and like and I know a lot of people have the have the um, idea that uh, Silent Hill Two is like the basis for the entire for the way it's Silent not, Hill though. works. Yeah, but, but it's just it's just it's it's just the way that it's like perpetuated, like by, by especially by Konami, like the way the movies treat it, just like. That's like that's specifically Silent Hill too, but no, the movie Silent Hill one, the movie's all about a well, yeah, well, yeah, the first Silent movie is exactly it's not exactly, <laughs> but it's basically a recreation of Silent Hill one. But but I'm just speaking like the fact that Pyramid Head pops up and like other Silent yeah. Hill media is yeah, just yeah. like that. That's yeah, it's it's not right. But well, it's, it's this, also said it's also said that any game after number four is pretty much just kind of like because it was made by different studios, it's. Not, not exactly it's yeah it's not not exactly the silent hill that we know and love you know mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't have the survival horror it doesn't have um it has a monster it doesn't have like multiple demonic monsters lacking in the gameplay like like when you go into like people's um going to people's minds and their psyches or whatever that that's not silent hill whatsoever like you can say like maybe when you're cutting apart like the skin doors with a razor like Maybe that's a little bit of the aesthetic, but it, 
absolutely basically nothing about this game screen silent hill like me and Corey, we played through uh little hope that is infinitely more silent hill than this game oh no and, I'm, and i've of. also heard that uh the person that i'm co-oping which i'll talk about later because i'm starting i started man of man of madon finally um the person who i'm co-oping with flat out told me he's like oh if you don't like madon you're gonna love little hope because it's basically a silent hill game like he flat out said that to me he's like oh no, yeah it, it, silent it, hill game. And i'm like hell it yeah certainly, I'm here. it certainly is i think i think when people say that the medium feels like silent hill is more is, of the aesthetic in the atmosphere it, 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 and it, the music. <laughs> well, yeah. So it has a lot to do with Akira Yamaoka being the mus the music um, composer and and director of this game, uh, but also no, the he, fact he does he does one of the music stuff. Oh, he's he does the other okay. world. Okay. He does the other world while right. their in house guy does the like real world stuff. Right. So I think people people really compared uh the other the uh, like the spirit realm to the yeah. other worlds from silent hill i think that's what they were making the comparison mm -hmm. with that's um, what i agree with. that's not that's, that's, that's not even necessarily a silent hill thing though there's, there's not like two different that, planes it, yes there no, is two no i i disagree no i dim dimensions i, I in, fundamentally in disagree silent. with that I fundamentally disagree with that. Have you not played three. Silent Hill three and two? I have. Oh, wait, Corey, we're not talking about the third one. Right they kind of like meld, but it's not like this separate. Like here's the real world and here's the spirit world. It's it's not like it's cut and it's not as cut and dry as that. There is the light world of Silent Hill, and there and there is the dark world of Silent Hill. You see the dark world in Silent Hill three. There's there's the. I, I, I disagree real, with that dissemination of it. I, I played the Silent Hill 3 way more I, than possibly anybody here. I, there is two worlds. I, in a, in a I possibly world. disagree with that as well. But there's, okay. uh, the really? world, there's the fog world, and then there's the other world. What Corey just, just said. Yes. I, I disagree. There's three worlds in Silent Hill. Really? Because that's canon, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> you I, disagree. You can't but disagree it's with that I know. It, it's, it's, it's not right. Yes, it is, dude. Oh my god, it's You're not. Like in in Silent Hill. Have you played a Silent yes, Hill? Yes, I have. I played all of them. Out of nowhere, they don't just pop out of nowhere. You have I'm not saying they pop out of nowhere. I'm just saying it's not like this cut clear and dry. Just like here's the spirit where all the spirits live. Like they're all kind of melding together. It's not. Uh, anyway, let's let's move forward. Okay, we can talk about this all day. Oh, we're talking about the media. We're talking about the um, media. <laughs> Uh, before we move on, I do want to note some uh, problematic elements of it. I'm not really too perturbed, perturbed, whatever the word is, by the, um, there's a, like, not even a side quest, there's like a little mention of a dude committing suicide, I don't think it was that bad. The parts that are problematic would be, um, this is probably the only real spoiler thing I'm going to get into. There's a character that, um, that rapes someone's daughter. Mm. Um, well, and, and then you dive in, and then you dive into their. S I'm sorry. It's a uh, multiple kids. They only talk about the daughter, but it's implied that it's more than that. Well, yeah, that just makes it worse. Like, but but so, like but then, terrible. But then, arguably, the worst part about that because uh, the daughter I met like. But, but yeah, like like obviously, like content warnings. We've already discussed that. Um, I believe you can depict fucked up things in, me in media as long as you do it appropriately and but for what follows that is what's the controversy uh behind it would be um you dive into the person's like psyche and it's supposed to build like sympathy like oh look how fucked up his childhood was and it's yeah, just like, it's like yeah no guys actions and it's like no like i i did play through that stuff and i 100 percent agree with you don't do you don't sympathize those people you don't and the game works so damn hard to sympathize them mm -hmm. like it, it even delves into like world war ii stuff in an attempt to sympathize him and it's really? like no like i wasn't i would i mean I was kind of getting that at first, but then, but then the commentary that the character was making was that, oh, you want me to, you want me to sympathize with you? Well, too bad. That's not going to happen. Like it was, it was like they were doing kind of like a bait and switch in a way, like mm -hmm. made you think that they were trying to sympathize with that character, but in actuality, it was just showing you where his darkness came from. The way I and... took it was mostly just like the writing wasn't strong enough to support that idea if that's what they were going for. Uh-huh. And um cuz cuz like yes, yeah, like you you immediately know upon like you mean this character like yes, he's done this incredibly fucked up thing. 
uh, having a fucked up past doesn't justify that whatsoever. And, and even if you have like the character who is like the insert for the player or whatever, uh, say like, yeah, no, that shit doesn't matter. Fuck you. It's still just just the, the execution of it is just super fucking off. Yeah. But. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I was going to say I was going to say a few things. Um, what was it? I'm so, so sorry my uh, headphones died. So I had to go. Oh, no worries. No worries. Um, so with with that said, like the the medium, the medium overall, uh, I think was a a different a different kind of experience. There were some, there were some things about the game that I enjoyed that were different, and it was it was fun for what it was. To me, there is no replay value, um, and it fell short. Uh, it fell short or flat with a lot of the writing mm -hmm. that they were trying to com they were trying to present with the story, uh, and then the ending was just it. It didn't. It like you didn't the the cliffhanger ending or whatever. It, it just didn't feel earned. It didn't feel like okay. It wasn't super substantial or as shocking as I thought it would be. You know, and it it. It, like they, it, it's possibly leading up to a sequel or something like that. But I just like, uh, I don't care if that makes sense. Like it's just it's it's forgettable in my mind. In my mind, yeah, I think that you know? basically so describes I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna preface what I say with I never beat it because I didn't have the drive to. I got about halfway through it and I just was mm -hmm. like, I can't do this anymore. Like I really couldn't. Um, this game, at, from from a writing point of view, uh suffers very heavily from and i'm just gonna coin this term right now side character is a hell of a lot more interesting than main character why is that the case in this game why like it's marianne's boring as all hell and i, I think she, i think she has enough funny little quips like i have, I, I made a note somewhere when you get the um I'm talking I, I am also talking this is correct like when she gets when she gets the what what not the crowbar what's the stupid thing that you cut the, oh, the chains with yeah she's the like cutters. agent the bolt cutter from Resident Evil Seven yeah yeah cutters but yeah but yeah when she gets stuff like that she's like hey, like bolt cutters that'd be a cool agent name agent bolt cutter like she has a little bit of a personality oh, job it's oh what oh now fucking forgetting his name Corey help me side dude side oh dude. Uh, Thomas Thomas huh? Thomas. Thomas. Thomas is so much more fucking interesting than Mary. Mary I don't. Is. Like, I don't think I agree with that. So much more interesting. The whole idea of him of him as a character dealing with his spirit self being like kind of psychotic, kind of kind of schizo schizophrenic. Like it's so much more interesting than Marianne. Just. I just feel. I just feel on. like. Like, I feel like, I feel like nowadays, I feel like nowadays, Marianne is kind of a, a a modern day Mary Sue character in the sense that, like, we've seen the we've seen like the dark, edgy. I'm a smoker. I'm a tormented soul. But I also have a quirky yeah. personality type, you know, lead before, you know, it, it, it's it's kind of like manic pixie dream girl in a way. Um, kind of like it's a weird, darker like, it's like a darker right, version she, of it, yeah. She's she's edgy for the sake of being edgy. While when you play Thomas's, I don't know. Again, I I don't know if you play as him again. When you play his first section, where he's going up against the the really creepy evil dude, he has so much more. Why should I be sympathetic about you? I know what you what you've done. I'm not gonna help you. I'm gonna end this. Like he's mm -hmm. full on. Like you are a terrible person. I'm gonna ruin your your. Your your life. I don't care if you're a tiny child on the on on the inside. Still, I don't care if you went through this all of this like depressing harrowing stuff. You are still a, a monster. I'm going to end you. While with Marianne, she's like, oh yeah, you're a monster, but I'll help you move on. Like no, that's not how that works. Like just from that section alone, Thomas just was so much of more of an interesting character to me. Yeah. And it's I just, just I, I think was just so boring. And again, I, yeah. I don't know if she gets better. I pro probably never know. And frankly, I don't care. Well, not, not to the, her, not to defend her or anything. Just real quick. I just not to defend her character yeah. or anything. But like 
basically i i think i think you could say that she was so blinded by the drive to uh figure out what happened uh in her past and like what happened to her sister um and like also like who even called her to the hotel in the begin to begin with I think that she just had too many questions going on that nothing it she didn't really ask herself any of those moral questions that you just asked that she was just driven by uh you know pure curiosity. I think Which I would have cared more about that story even Jose, like I even I if the pacing was a, earlier. I thought this really I, I was like when I was like I'm talking. <laughs> oh no it's all it, it we're we're on a podcast. I, we're hamming it up for this show. It's all good. I just <laughs> no, no, I just have a lot of, like, I have a lot of feelings about this game, and it, I, I honestly think it's interesting that our feelings don't match up, but be I just, like... Before I ask you this answer. thing, because I'm, I'm really curious about it, uh, yeah. I mean, fuck me, I guess Otherworld has an entry on silenthill.fandom.com, so fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> we said it! Um, why, why do you passionately hate, uh, this game? So I passionately hate it due to my hatred for the actual company and the fact that if you look into the company's history, they have copied a lot of stuff for their past games and have gotten away with it just kind of being their 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 own thing. Like as a writer, having inspirations is one thing and it's totally great, but using those inspirations so blatantly and pulling it as your as your own ideas is not great. Also the fact that they're trying to patent their like dual screen game setup when the fucking ds exists and the 2ds exists and that's my joke <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah and to me it's also the way that um what was i gonna say it it's just the way that they handled the medium with them being all like oh this is our magnum opus this is the game that we've always wanted to make no you guys just want to make a silent hill game and konami didn't give you the rights I will capitulate a little bit on so so when I said this game does not scream Silent Hill to me in any way, shape, or form, I will I will capitulate to the effect that they were they might have set out to make a Silent Hill game, but they don't fundamentally understand what a Silent Hill game is. Yeah. So what so what I believe happened with this game was if people don't know, it came out a couple months ago that Konami had been shopping the rights to Silent Hill around and they were allowing companies like development studios to come to them with, with their own Silent Hill pitch and they would either accept it or deny it and obviously they've they've accepted one we don't know which I heard a podcast but, talked about this yeah <laughs> I wonder what podcast that could be looks at uh, camera my my, my <laughs> theory is that they pitched this as a, as a Silent Hill game and they had it pretty much like the story done. They had the it had the other world as the as the spirit world. And they approached Konami and Konami said no. So they had to like, oh shit, we have to switch stuff at the last minute. So they made it a Polish Cold War horror game. I think that's probably which, the most probable theory. Because also the fact that Akira, which uh, I will say one of my favorite things about this game is Akira Yamaoka's soundtrack is one of the best that he's done in a very long time because this is because the vocal tracks are so fucking good. And I don't know the name of it, but there's a track with Mary Ellen Mc, Mc, McLennan. For those who don't know, she does the vocal tracks for all the Silent Hill games and she's duetting it with Troy, Troy Baker. And it's so fucking good. There like, I hate that it's in such a shit game because it's so good. There is a there is a scene later on. Uh, it's basically right near the end, where I, I haven't listened to like any of the soundtrack like outside of the game, but there is a music scene that happens. That's so that is probably that damn worth it. No, it, it's a vocal track, but like when it happens in game, it has a decent amount of of an impact that I think that you would at least appreciate. But that would also require well, you playing a game you don't like. He's done is going to be fucking great, and I feel bad that he was given such a shit product to make such great music to, because he deserves so much better. And the one thing that scares me though is Blue Bluebird Team has come out and said that they're working on a horror game that's in a very popular franchise. And I swear to fuck if Konami gave them the rights to Silent Hill, I'm burning this entire world to the to the ground. I'm taking this podcast with um, <laughs> give before them the rights to Silent Hill. Don't, don't, before, do not, don't like. <laughs> before we move on, does anyone just want to give their? I guess Sarah just gave her closing comments. Corey, what are your closing oh, comments? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much with Sarah. I mean, I, I don't think I, I, I don't think I passionately hate the game as much as she does. Um, but, uh, I will say that, um, oh, oh, whoops. Oh, she did. Sarah oh, oh, wait, whoops. Go. I'm Sarah now on, on stream. <laughs> wait, oh, Sarah's sorry. coming back. Oh, no. <laughs> you are now me and you now bear this burden of being me. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead, Corey. There we go. Okay. Um, I think I'm with Sarah in the sense uh, that uh, Konami certainly does shoot themselves in the foot uh, quite a bit. And so I literally have, until they prove me wrong, I have zero faith in how they handle Silent Hill. Um, as far as medium goes, it was an okay game. It was okay. Uh, I'm more looking forward to Resident Evil Village. So... <laughs> I, I think same here we're only a couple months for village guys i know okay. <laughs> less than two months i think i'll basically just go ahead and echo that i i don't hate this game i don't dislike it i don't love it it's very middle of the road like when i think back like did i enjoy my time with it am i glad i played it? i'm just like it was something to play that's yeah that's basically it about was, it it was something to pass the time it was yeah give uh also, give super massive uh I, I know they already turned it down, but I, in an ideal world, I'd want Supermassive to make a Silent Hill again. Think, you, know what's, you know what's crazy? I think Supermassive may have turned it down. Or wait, did Konami no, turn Supermassive down? No, Konami. So uh, K Konami... The rumor is is that the Dark Picture Saga was supposed to be a Silent Hill Saga. That is oh. the main rumor going around now. Um, that, that the Dark Pictures was going to be si three different games set in the Silent Hill universe and they were all going to connect because of the town oh interesting yeah. and if, if i remember correctly from the uh from the article we did it was um so a team from konami did specifically go out and search out uh super massive but then another i guess whatever higher up at konami shut that idea down yeah so like so like apparently it got to the phase where they started working on it and when the upper head saw it, they just didn't approve of it for some weirdest fuck reason. Mm -hmm. And so what became the rumor is what what became of that is what the Dark Picture Saga is now. Yeah, that it seems. That, and then there's also rumors that like Sony directly like Sony Pictures um, or what's the production studio? It's like. Sony S.I.E. Sony, Sony Japan. Or just like the production studio for Sony for games. Um, basically, Sony, Sony is Sony. Sony, I don't know. Yeah, apparently there's also rumors that Sony directly is talking to Konami about producing a Silent Hill game specifically for PlayStation. But yeah, we'll see. Well, we might see this summer because we keep hearing rumors that they're going to yeah. reveal two titles. The rumors so. that they is that COVID pushed it pushed it back again. And mm -hmm. uh, this is straight from Dusk, Dusk Golem, the Resident Evil leaker on Twitter. He's mm -hmm. like gone on record saying that, yes, yeah, something's happening. I promise something's happening. COVID just pushed back. Because if people noticed, Silent Hill is in Dead, dead by Daylight now. And that yeah. wasn't just a coincidence. Yeah. So they're trying to get it back in the spotlight. They're trying yeah, to bring it back in the spotlight. Thing. They They're going to announce two new pachinko machines. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I played pachinko. That shit's not fun. I don't get how people are addicted to it. Anyway, let's go, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, Microsoft has announced, uh, I'm sorry, they've finalized their acquisition of Bethesda, the publisher and owner of development studios responsible for titles such as Fallout, The Elder Scrolls, Dishonored, and Doom. Uh, effective as of last Friday, 20 iconic Bethesda titles are making their way to Xbox Game Pass, including Dishonored, the Doom series, uh, Fallout's New Vegas 4 and 76, Prey, Rage 2, the Elder Scrolls series, the Evil Within 1, not Evil Within 2 for whatever reason. Yeah, that, um, that's weird as hell. The Wolfenstein series, Sans, uh, New Colossus, and before I go on, uh, most of this is, is, is most likely due to just um, contracts with other... Um, with other platform holders so uh, it, it's safe to assume all these are still going to be coming to xbox they own them now it's just a matter of time um this is ultimately a net gain for game pass users and adds value to the service in form of day one game pass releases but obviously it's also a negative for those that don't have access to game pass whether it be through xbox consoles uh pcs or have like a strong enough um 
strong enough internet to stream it via their Android phone. You can't do that on a on an iPhone now. Um, sorry. Uh, fuck, where was I? Also, the messaging from Phil Spencer and Microsoft as a whole has been uh, vague as to whether titles won't be coming to Sony consoles. Uh, with a statement confirming that, uh, quote, some new titles in the future will be exclusive to Xbox and PC players. And they spent $7.5 billion on this. So uh, I guess and, I'm going to be playing whatever the new Skyrim or not Skyrim, whatever the new Elder Scrolls game is on my PC. Dude, I can't wait for Skyrim 2 to come out. Shit's going to be hype. Skyrim 2. <laughs> um, what, are, what are some of your guys' thoughts in general about Game Pass, um, Xbox? I think and- it was... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, I was just I was going to say that this means Microsoft owns Tango Tango Gameworks now, which for those who don't know is Shinji Mikami, a.k.a. like the father of Resident Evil. It's his indie studio. Technically, Microsoft owns that now. And he's actually been he actually recently came out and said that this is a huge win for uh, Japanese titles coming to Xbox. Now, since the Xbox mm. over Japan is not very, it's not a very much popular console. Uh, also, this means we're most likely going to get like something like the Evil Within Three, since Microsoft is funding it. Oh my god, I'm excited! <laughs> and, um, um, but yeah, like like this is a huge win for like uh, Japanese gaming in on the X Xbox. Now they own this company. So this is a big thing because now we could see more Tango Gameworks titles because their titles never really sold the best. They always had a like niche audience and they always got like solid scores, but they never really sold super highly. I want to hammer that point in specifically. And even aside from Tango, it, it applies to I, I want to say like even specifically like Arcane games, uh, Dishonored and Prey, like those are very highly critically pl- praised games that didn't sell that great. And with them being under Game Pass and having funding from Microsoft, like like the whole purpose of um of these distri- of these distribution platforms whether it's Netflix, Amazon Prime whatever, it doesn't matter how much they sell, it's about adding value to that platform. So this gives stability to those games to so like now we can actually get Dishonored 3 without having to worry about like is this game going to sell or not. So it's ultimately um in this aspect it's absolutely an, an ultimate win. Uh, in terms of like, hey, you can get these great games. Like they pro- they would not exist without Game Pass. So fuck yeah. I uh, I, I have the evil within now. <laughs> I have never been. Better. I have never been more excited to be a PC gamer. <laughs> and almost every single one of these is on PC. I think there's like maybe one or two exceptions, but uh, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me look at the Game Pass Twitter account and find the exceptions really fast. Yeah, I have it right so, just keep... I... so the only one's not coming to okay so Fallout New Vegas is only going to be on console uh, Morrowind is not available on the phone Oblivion's not available on phone and the Elder Scrolls Online is on phone but aside from that everything else is on everything that's uh it's fucking it's amazing. Just, like I, I know we've already like echoed it to like the fucking ends of the earth, but Game Pass is the best fucking value in gaming. And, like you don't need an Xbox. You can have a PC. You can have your phone. It's right. It's insane. It's just so weird to me that we live in a time where you can play an MMORPG on your phone. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, actually, what, actually, one point I forgot. Um, you can look at a game like The Last of Us 2 where that game would not have like the insane amount of production value, the amount of resources, the amount of time for the publisher, in this case, Sony, being like, yeah, just take all the time in the world. We're going to keep funneling you money. That doesn't happen when you're just a regular third party studio making games. If uh, Microsoft is going to be able to push those resources into these games because they want value to their platform. It's not about selling copies of that game. It's about getting people onto I, I want to say console. Well, they're expanding beyond that. It's it's just Game Pass as a platform. True. And- um, also, really fast, I just saw uh, they basically teased that that new People Can Fly Square Square Enix Destiny style game out Outriders will be coming to Game Pass mm-hmm. on day on day one. Also, so like Game Pass is on a fucking roll. Like, like I like I will say it's one of the best things. I'm glad I signed up for a couple of months ago because it's how I'm able to play Man of M- Man of Madon without having to pay for it. I just wish they would put little hope up so don't think mm-hmm. that. What does everyone little think of? 
What does everyone think of the potential negatives of this? Uh, so, like, obviously, if you're if someone's like only a Sony console player, like, sorry, like just, the, the Fallout yeah. Four, you might have loved it, but you're not getting Fallout Five. Yeah, that's honestly the one thing that kind of not really pisses me off, but ticks me off because Bethesda has a fuck ton of player base on Place Place Station. Like, it totally that's true. does. Yeah, and. If I if I remember correctly, Evil Within one and two sold better on PlayStation in both like in in all ter in all ter ter territories. I think that's basically every multi platform game too. Well, also just like the fact that Bethesda games I think just sell better on PlayStation. So like, and of course I've I've talked to a couple people about this and I'm like, oh well, that's not really losing money if like Microsoft's funding them. That's a lot of people that aren't going to be playing your games. Like I know so many people who own a PS5 or who own a PS4 who don't own a Series X or don't own a PC. People. They don't have like a gaming PC. Yeah. Like there's a lot of people that only have a PlayStation as a gaming console, and then then may maybe they have like a laptop or like a MacBook or something for business, but that's about it. I think the yeah, key thing so for me about this is like yes, you can be like. Like, yes, you can be excited that these games are all coming to Game Pass or, and that any future titles are going to be day one Game Pass. Be excited for that. Be excited for these games like Dishonored 3 going to be able to exist. Be excited for like all these resources being pumped into them to make them better games. You should not be excited that these games are exclusive. You should not be happy that like Timmy down the road just can't play it now. Like, haha, fuck yeah. you, Timmy. I think, I think when you're a kid or you're a teenager, that, that you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in the whole console wars thing and be to be competitive like oh f you you you're an xbox player playstation's better no xbox is better blah 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 but it's like at the end of the day like what you just said when you're an adult and you realize the business side of this stuff it's not a player forward it's not a it's not a for the player benefit that these games are exclusive plus plus you it's know. not that great since Microsoft's trying to make them seem like the good guy. Be like, oh, we're still going to honor contracts that had Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo launch on PS5 first. That doesn't make you the good guy. If you can, if you can, that's just so contracts to go. You can, re you can release fucking Skyrim four on the place on, on the on, on the PlayStation Five. You can release whatever the fuck is that Todd Todd Howard game. Uh, oh, that space one. The one that keeps leaking every every other week. Um, mm -hmm. What is it called? Uh, Outriders, the one you mentioned. No, uh, it's it's Starfield. It's, it's the next Star Starfield. Thank you. You can release Starfield on on place on on PlayStation Five, or do the thing where it releases on the Xbox for the first five months, then drop it on on PlayStation after. It's like them. It's like people are like, oh, well, at least they're honoring the like contracts that were already there. No, that's just a legal that's, thing. That's like that that happened with. That's um, the only reason they're doing it. What was it? The outer outer worlds when they bought when they bought um obsidian. Like yeah, they had to honor that because it's just a contractual stuff. But yeah. like honestly, I don't blame Xbox for wanting to keep these games exclusive. They want people on their platform. But like as a player, you should not be rejoicing. Like oh my yeah, God. my PlayStation if, friends can't play it now. If if like they could yoink Deathloop, they would. They would yoink that in a fucking mm -hmm. instant. They'd be like, nope, that's officially a series a Series X exclusive. That they could do it with like Ghost. Ghostwire Tokyo too. Doink it, drop a major Japanese title on the Series X first. But but the fact they're doing it, that's not a good thing. That's literal legal shit. That's because whatever money they offered Sony to break out of the contract, Sony was like, "Fuck that." They're like, mm -hmm. they were like, no, "We are keeping these games. At least we have Final Fantasy VII, and y'all are never going to get it." Yeah, I see. That's the thing is that they could have they. they I don't know. How, I don't know what their contract is with Square Enix, but with like some games, it's it's like, oh, this is on Xbox and PlayStation. But with other games like Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's just a PlayStation game. That's why I was con I was confused when they put Kingdom Hearts three on the Xbox and the PlayStation. But then that just sort of opened the floodgates for all of the Kingdom Hearts games to go on yeah. to Xbox like, and to go on to PC. 
let's so. let's let's just be real and i'm gonna go off on a limb here but this is kind of a smart limb the reason why so uh, the reason why square enix has not released final fantasy 7 remake on the x xbox is they probably sold next to no copies of kingdom hearts 3 on the xbox probably all on place on playstation let's just be you, honest well you want to know why so you, wa- you want to know why because most people because because one kingdom hearts from the beginning has only ever been on playstation so they kind of screwed themselves on that end if they had released kingdom hearts onto the xbox and playstation from the very beginning which they would have never done i mean that that, that's the other weird thing where just like even third party not even first part a third party japanese developers they just weren't making ports for xbox because it wasn't big in japan they just did not give a shit about it it mm-hmm. was it was only when Microsoft started sending dump trucks of money to them where they said, hey, we we want your games on Game Pass because a lot of people use Game Game Pass now. But, you know, Final Fantasy 7, 8 never come into the Series X. Yeah. They are going to have to wait till that till, till that fucking collection's over when we're all 60. I think one day I want to say, say one more thing. <laughs> I want to say that there's. There, there has to be some sort of socio-political mumbo jumbo involved because obviously it's it's a fact that Microsoft is American and Sony is Japanese, and so there's like there's a lot of like American pride or like Japanese pride, and there's just like the meshing of the meshing of uh, games and consoles. It gets very sticky and very political, and it's like frustrating. Also, so. the fact it's been like okay, so like I, I'll say it's been easier. It's been as hard as it is here, but it's been somewhat easier to get a Series X in in Japan than it has been here. Because no one wants because, it there. Yeah, people don't want the <laughs> Xbox over there. People literally crowd a tiny electronic gaming store to get a play a PlayStation more than they'll crowd a tiny electronic store to get a X xbox that do we know oh is it is it because there are more japanese based games available for the playstation than there are for the xbox i don't i like i i swear i read why there's a reason why people want the playstation more i don't remember it and i don't want to say something out of my butt so i won't Mm -hmm. but i know that there's like actual reasons out there as to why the x xbox doesn't really sell some um before we move on there's just a couple other points i want to touch on uh where did i put it um a one you don't need an xbox i don't need an xbox but i want an xbox i don't need it but i want it it's, like, it's that spongebob episode where you're just standing there all dehydrated i don't need it i don't need it i definitely don't need it, it. yeah um point one uh another added benefit uh, but this is obviously going to be a long term and it's going to be a lot of uh, growing pains uh this is ultimately a very substantial um incitement to competition for sony where they're gonna like if, if people can't get like a skyrim on a skyrim equivalent on on sony consoles they're either gonna have to buy another developer or they're going to have to invest the resources into a new studio to to build one from the ground up so if more if better games come out in order to rival uh the elder scrolls or, or in, any game that under Bethesda's umbrella, really? that's that's ultimately well, a good thing. Rival the Elder Scrolls. Look well, at you, you El- tiny one El- child. Elden, Elden <laughs> Ring. Elden Ring. See, Elden Ring looks like it might be that equivalent. Well, that's coming out on the Xbox. You, you see, sir, they they, they could have done that. Wait, is that? But, but they 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 missed their window to get I fucking Obsidian. The uh, advertising rights to that game. Yeah, Elden Ring. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm sure it's coming to PlayStation Five, but they have the advertising but, rights. So. They have the they, they have the ad rights. They well, have the right yeah. Uh, I mean, point- announced the rights. I mean, good job on that, Microsoft. That thing got fucking dropped like a bad habit a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, point two. Um, I I swear we're not sponsored. If if, if Microsoft, if you want to sponsor us, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll put I'll put a giant box. Yes, I just wanted Xbox. <laughs> Have um, be the new Gears of War spokes, spokes, spokesperson, I, please. I, I will tattoo an X on my head. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, I, I want to definitively say uh, Game Pass is definitely looking like it's the future. And like when you compare it against um, Sony's strategy for their first party games, where they're considered like premium titles, where like they're $70. 
seventy dollars is a lot to ask from people, especially I know we're kind of getting towards the tail end of the pandemic or whatever, but seventy dollars either way is still a lot of money. Yeah. Compare that to Game Pass, where you're paying like ten dollars a month and you're getting all these games day one. You have this entire backlog. Um, Microsoft is winning the the value war like already. I have not and, paid for an X for an X Xbox game in months. <laughs> just and, exactly, and exactly, and that's what I loved about. Like I, I told my, um, I told my brother, I was like, Hey, I was like, you know, you could just get Xbox game pass. Right. And like on your PC and just play the medium, you don't have to buy it and shuck out, you know, 50, 60 bucks for the game. He's like, yeah, but it it, it looks like a really good game. So I think I'm, I think I'm just going to buy it. And plus, you know, you're, you're paying more for game pass than you are for the game. I'm like, okay but like not if you buy game pass for a whole year or whatever yeah. you know it's like, mm-hmm. i don't know it's like his argument was weak so um and and what sarah just said it's like talk about talk about like living in the moment because like you don't technically own the game but you still get to play it all the way through you yeah. get to play all the content as, like you would if you bought it you still have the option of buying it if you actually want to own it digitally without having to constantly re-up your your xbox game pass but at least you get to play the game pretty much for free i mean if you compare um, it to uh to sony's uh playstation plus this is like basically that's not basically the same price but you're getting more out of game pass than you are ps plus and you still get like the games with gold and everything too yeah. Also, and, and, uh, and if you like the game that game much, pass. then you can. If you like the game that much, then you could just buy it, and then you'll have it forever. You know. Plus, pe- people seem to forget that Game Pass has EA Play attached to it as well, so you get the entirety of of EA's library. Titanfall. That means. Ooh. That means like all the Dragon Ages, all the Mass Mass Effects. I I wouldn't be surprised if the fucking Legendary Edition shows up on there. I'm That'd be cool. Baffled if that doesn't show up on there. So like you are literally like I'm literally playing Dragon Age 2 right now because I downloaded it off Game Pass. So it's like it's it's like it's such an insane fucking deal. Like it's crazy. It's mm. nuts how much money that you are saving. Again, I've not bought an Xbox game in months. I downloaded the medium. I didn't buy that shit. I'm glad I didn't. Same. Like, I feel like if I, if, I, if I had bought it, I wouldn't have lasted as long as I did. I would have been pissed. I would have been like, I wasted my money on this. Like, I would have been legitimately angry. So plus I, plus, I think it's a good way for you to try games that you might have never tried. I would have never played The Outer Worlds. Never played The Outer Worlds if it wasn't on game. It's, it's, game definitely, it's definitely a... It's definitely a um, gratification guaranteed sort of deal with xbox game pass because if you are if you play a game and you don't finish it and you don't really like it well no harm done you just wasted maybe maybe an hour or two or a few hours um you know and and, but if you really like the game then fan freaking tastic you can continue to play it and if one day you choose to be like ah you know what i don't want to pay for game pass right now uh you can always just go back and buy that game because you love it so much you know it's it's really it's really winning right now um xbox xbox's uh, or microsoft's ecosystem in general um so sony sony either sony either did one of two things with the whole ps5 and and it's its own ecosystem either they are just basically shucking out the ps5 for one last hurrah in the console wars um, or they get their shit together and they actually focus more on their ecosystem. Which I think they're starting to do with their like gold collection, because there's some sweet ass games on on the gold collection, mm-hmm. especially with God of War just getting its PS its PS5 update, which is supposedly fucking nuts. I have yet to try it out, but supposedly it makes that game oh, it did? better, which is absolutely oh my god. I think yeah, dude, I, I think it's just that. I think it's just 60 FPS. I don't know if they added No, I think I think they added a graphics and and or a performance mode to it. I think they had that in the because I played on PS4 Pro, so they have that. So you can basically play in resolution mode from the PS4 Pro, but you get the frame rate benefits because you're on stronger hardware. I mean, I, best I of both worlds. Into it makes it look f- even fucking better. 
So it's like those games on that gold list are solid fucking oh, titles. Oh, I, I, I almost I forgot. Yeah. First world problem is as cool as like this PlayStation Plus collection is. How is as amazing as Game Pass is. Like I'm looking at, at all the games that are coming specifically from the Bethesda deal. I'm just like, yes, this is so amazing. And then I'm just like, fuck, I already own all these fucking games. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, I already played all of these. That these was are like, me with the like, the like evil, evil within. I'm like, I've already played this. This is where, this is where we hit that wall where we're like, well, we've lived for over two decades, uh, almost three decades for some of us. Um, and we're getting to the point where we've played a lot of games that have already re been released. So a lot of these mergers, a lot of these things that are happening are more beneficial to the younger crowd who are just getting into gaming because they've never played these older games. Or to people who have like, who played maybe Dragon Age Inquisition first and never played the other two. Mm -hmm. And now the other two are on Game Pass because of the EA Plus collection. Right. Because like, just, I know just... that's what I'm doing with, uh, with uh, Dragon Age 2. When I was younger, I never got that far into Dragon Age 2 because I just never really understood it. And that sounds weird. But now I'm replaying it now because I have fucking over 400 goddamn hours in, 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 in Inquisition. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I can finally play this and enjoy this for how I enjoyed in, in, in like Inquisition to be. So it's like, it's great for stuff like that. But yeah, like I already played all these fucking games. <laughs> Let's see. We should pr we should probably move on. Um, so we, have, we probably have time for because I know everyone wants to talk about what they've been playing, and there's fear of us, so we can dedicate more time to it. And do you want to talk? Still vaporware. <laughs> yeah, we can talk Elden Ring. I mean, there, there's not much here. I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and read this. Uh, footage of From Software's hotly anticipated Elden Ring recently leaked with an internal internal month. Oh yeah. As, nope, English is good. Never mind. An internal month old trailer making the rounds on the internet. Uh, while only a five second snippet, the leaked footage confirms the return no, of Sekiro's jump that? mechanics as well as horse mounted combat. Uh, the fervor surrounding yeah, Elden Ring. That, my friend. The, the main one that was floating around was the five second uh, one. Uh, there's, um, there, there's like a two minute and 30 second one going around. <laughs> Uh, the fervor surrounding Elden Ring is at an all-time high, with fans constantly mystified on Twitter as to why there hasn't been any updates on the game. Uh, despite the fact that COVID has slowed down development worldwide and that Sekiro... I, I, I want to reiterate this fucking point because I keep saying it on Twitter. Sekiro came out not even two fucking years ago. Keep your... Hey, hey, just just wait. Not, it, was, it has not even been two years. Have some goddamn patience. Yeah, well, I, that's the thing. That's the thing that I. Had a separate team working on it. Right, but I still think that's the thing that people people are having, especially in the pandemic times right now. Is like patience is at an all time low yeah. because and people are so freaking entitled when it comes to video games because they literally, as soon as it's announced, they're like, "Okay, uh, I want that now. I want it right now." Like, if you're going to announce it, you should be ready to release it. Like, I want it right now. Don't don't show because I, I see where they're I see where they're coming from. One of my friends, one of my friends kind of described it to me as like he likes forgetting about games that are announced for a lot as long as he possibly can so that he can wait until the release date. And then he gets excited when it's about to come out. Um, and I get that because that's part of like not being disappointed and not raising your expectations too high. Um, so I think, I think video game companies could take a note maybe from that. Like we do, we do need to be more patient. I will say that much, but I think I video mean, game companies need to be a bit, a bit more decisive on when they announce their games. I mean, when did they announce it? It was like two uh, years ago. So, wait, hold on. So I swear I read something and I'm not defending the people who are being like, release it now. But like, I swear, I, I remember reading something where Miyazaki's been on record saying that they had a team doing Sekiro and a team doing Elden Ring. I swear to God, he's been on record saying I'm I'm pretty confident they do have two teams because, what was it, Bloodborne came out 2015 and then Dark Souls 3 was like 2015 or 16. But they they have two studios working uh, concurrently on different titles. Yeah. So like so like I swear that they had most of that team working on Sekiro, then part of it working on Elden the Ring. Then when Sekiro launched, they had a team doing post game content. Then the rest moved moved on. So like 
I can maybe see it releasing at the end of this year, early next year at the like. Man, I, I haven't. I mean, oh, oh, here's another thing. I know, I know, from software had nothing to do with a Demon Souls remake, but we literally got a fucking Souls game last year. You have Souls to play. People need to chill. Jesus Christ. They're fucking um, nuts. Can I say that in the most loving way possible? I don't. <laughs> like, it's like, they literally, as soon as they get a whiff, as soon as someone says, oh, hi. As soon as, as soon as someone fucking says the word Elvin, people literally tackle you. They're like, where is it? Is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's like, no, it's like, calm down. You literally got a fucking taped trailer that was taped on like a PlayStation 2 camera. <laughs> they might have some more, um, they might have some I... more patience if they were doctors. Haha, ha, you've said that like five times. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say that I just, I, 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 Maybe I'm not the only one in this conversation that remembers this, but I remember and I'm going to sound old right now, but I remember I remember a time when uh, p- game v- new video games would get announced very close to their release date. So Bethesda pre 2018. <laughs> Basically, like basically when the Internet was still young and like video game reporting was like. Less less like rumor mill and more like substantiated interviews and facts and and stuff and like gaming magazines and stuff like that. You you were actually able to wait and be pleasantly surprised by a new release. And you didn't have to wait that long because guess what? They had already been working on it for three, four, five, some odd years. And then they announced it like a month or so before it was supposed to come out. And then the, for that whole month, it was just advertising, advertising, advertising. Nowadays, we got freaking data miners. We got people trying to leak shit. We got the rumor mill working 24 seven. And it's just like, you cannot forget about a game for one damn minute these days. I think there's three points I want to pause it and then we can jump off on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, I think your friend has the best grasp of this. And I, th- I would like to think this is generally how I approach it. Just like, just play it when it comes out. Like, like I, I'll, I'll maybe get hyped like maybe the week before it comes out. But just don't stress out over things coming out like that. Yeah. Uh, two, um... Shit, I forgot. I'm gonna I'm gonna stall for time while I think about it. Just gonna say random oh, words. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll say this. I'll say this. The first <laughs> the first when when there was the like a month ago, right? When when they did the Resident Evil Village showcase, I was literally hyped for Resident Evil Village for an entire week. And I the when I pre-ordered it, when they announced the pre-orders yeah. and I pre-ordered it, I was like, <laughs> okay, I want it now. Like I pre-ordered it, it's in my cart, I want it right now. Why can't it already be May? Give mm-hmm. it to me. And I was like, I was like, I felt this intense anxiety and this frustration that I just couldn't have the game now. And I had to stop myself and be like, why do I feel this way? Why am I feeling so (laughs) fucking entitled? Like, chill out. Like, it's fine. You pre-ordered it. It's coming to your house. It's going to be here around your birthday, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. It'll be fine. So now I'm fine. Now I like forget about it, and I'm just like, all right, whatever. I, I think I'm basically, I think I'm basically saying just like, yeah, excited for it. The week of, out, I'm gonna be hyped. Oh, but uh, the thing I the, the, the thing I forgot that um, Bethesda, um, specifically for Fallout Four, like they announced it like I th- I think like just yeah, a couple a handful of months. Four months. Four yeah. Months after they announced it, they're like, hey, here's Fallout Four. Here's a fuck to the gameplay. It comes out in four in four months. Like right. I. Say, say what you want about but- Bethesda, and I will. But, like, I will at least give them credit when they used to do that. Because that was kick-ass. Like, that was like, oh, I'm not personally excited for this, but I know friends who are freaking out. Now they only have to wait four or a month, and that's great. Like, I think even on the opposite end of the aisle, like, the video games industry is so fucking secretive about what they're working on compared to yeah. uh, the film industry. Um, like, the film industry doesn't give a fuck if, if someone knows that they're, like, even casually thinking of shopping so you just like i don't know we might we, we thought about like this friday the 13th idea we had this person writing it we had this studio looking at it here's they're some so locations trans- they just don't so give a shit transparent about that stuff they're so transparant 
and it's like the one thing I'll say about this whole Elden Ring shit is this was is this is one hundred percent the fan the 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 fan base's fault. This is one hundred percent them literally putting this on the highest of highest pedestals and being like this is going to be the greatest thing that's ever created. When literally, if you watch that full two, I think it's like two minute twenty second trailer that was taped on a fucking flip flip phone. All the animations are taken from from Dark Souls. All of them. Like nothing is new. The only new animation. I mean, it's still early in development. Of course. Yeah, but it's like if they're really gonna do that and just make it just a Souls game and slap George R. R. Martin's name on it. Like I fully believe the dumb theory that that this is just this is this is the last Game of Thrones book. The game is gonna end. It's gonna be the last Game of Thrones book. Like I think um, I think Roman Nomad in chat uh, nailed it too. It's just like fanatical uh, stand culture. It's bad, and it just leads to toxicity. And like, if you want, if you want to point to like any com- community and and gaming and in, in general, Souls community is so fucking toxic. Like, what what was it? We did the one little segment where I said like, yeah, they sh- there should be difficulty options. It has it doesn't impact the way I want to play. And what it got like a freaking week's worth of fucking shitheads coming after me for that. That was well, because fun. it's like it's gatekeeping. That's all it is. It's like it's gatekeeping. Like, oh no, you gotta. You're. You just need to get good. It's the whole get good meme, you know, coming to fruition and coming to life uh, on the internet. Um, when it's like, you know, how about how about turn it around on them and get fucked? How about that? Mm-hmm. Uh, because Ooh. people have freaking. People are not always fully able like like you are you know other people have disabilities and maybe want to enjoy uh, a souls game without you know getting completely squashed by the first enemy they came across i don't and, think uh, i don't think you were on the episode Corey, but um i don't think you're on the episode when we were going a bit more in depth with the uh like difficulty options or whatever but like even for souls games like i will i will stand by the stance that there should be difficulty options for however people want to play but I'll always still like recommend to someone, and I and uh, Jedi Fallen Order does a pretty good description of just like, hey, play whatever difficulty you want. We don't give a fuck. Uh, we think you should like leave a, a certain level of, like difficulty for yourself, but otherwise, go do whatever fuck you want. Yeah, I like think I was it. um I was just playing the the final demo of the System Shock re, re- remake, and the difficulty for that because I don't think the original had dif- difficulties, and those games are notoriously hard. Mm-hmm. And the difficulty option that it had, it wasn't really a difficulty option. You had like four different aspects of 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 the game: hacking, um, cameras, combat, and something else. I think it was health, and it and it and it went one through three: one making it the least hardest, three making it hard. And you could switch and mix and match all all of them. So if you wanted to play the game on all ones and make it just experience for like the story, you could. If you wanted to make it impossible and put it all on three, you could 100% do that too. Mm-hmm. And I think like even if you don't put a difficulty option in your in your game, doing something like that, which allows us to switch the difficulty for how much we want it to be, and and allow us to change that mid game if we think it's too easy or if it's too too hard, right? It's so important. And I think Souls, because so I want Souls to have a difficulty difficulty option, yes. But I think if we did Souls more like how the System Shock remake did it. And did it like, oh, uh, how do you want yourself to level up? Do you want to do the easiest way possible or the hardest? How do you want enemies to hit? How do yeah. you want your health and to go? Like a lot of a lot of games already do this in the sense that like they they put little descriptions for every difficulty. And you literally didn't you wouldn't even need to like you would just need to add an easier difficulty. That's literally it. You basically like an assisted mode, if you will. So it's like and so you just put normal or whatever and it just says uh maybe like as the game was made to be played and that's just the normal game mode and then um you have like assisted mode right above that where it's like for those players that just want to focus on story that's it that's literally all it takes it's and not you know dropped dropped the ball on not putting that in there Right. And their dumb excuse of, oh, we wanted to keep it as close to the original as possible. Like, that's not an excuse. You well, even even as, even as Nexus pointed out, uh, Nexus, who's, who's super diehard into Demon Souls, like she pointed out, like they took creative liberties with the remake where they changed character designs. So that argument doesn't fucking yeah. hold any water. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just it's dumb. They could have done that. They could have broken the broken the trail and put in 
difficulty options or at least accessibility features. Like, come on. Like, games right. nowadays have accessibility features. Just like, like maybe, maybe like it could have been as easy as starting the player off at like level 20 instead of zero. Like a handicap. I mean, I mean even, even so much of this stuff is, is like damage modifiers, just like go into the code or whatever. It's, it's probably a bit more complicated than we're making it out to be. Just like instead of the enemies doing, doing 100% damage, put it to like 20%. It's. Right. You don't have to like fundamentally Control change the way the game plays. Fucking, fucking did it. Control did it with their with their accessibility options. See the issue, with, like, and I know you have your you, you have your own issues with Control, but like my specific issue with the way they word yeah. their assisted, just like we believe our game is best with a challenge. Well, yeah. Control is not well, yeah. Control is not a game that benefits from being difficult. It's not. It, right. It's not. It doesn't have like the Souls ethos behind it. If well, anything, the difficulty well, gets in the way. Well, like, also, they, like, why, why you're, like, digging the code, like, you can, in, in, hack it, man. you can change, hack into it, you can change the percentage of your, like, powers coming back, of you regaining health, like, you can do that, they've shown that you can go into game files and do that, and I feel like Blue Point could have easily done that, like, they could have, like, allowed you to change the percentage it's, it's, stuff the, the, the fact of the matter the, the fact of the matter is is that there's no excuse they could have given that would um make it okay to just omit that that uh thing i think that i think what it was is they they just wanted to remove themselves completely from the controversy so they just gave some sort of bullshit excuse you know. uh, also, the whole the whole the whole point of this conversation is that Elden Ring is, is a vaporware. It is one of those movies that everyone claims that they saw as a kid, even though it doesn't it doesn't exist. I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far in this case. We all just willed Elden Ring into existence. <laughs> <laughs> people people were like, "Man, wouldn't it be great if From Software and George R. R. Martin teamed up?" And then the collective internet consciousness. Just oh, speaking Elden speaking Ring. of soul games, uh, freaking um. What is it? What is it called? Uh, the re, re, not resurgence. Re, re, the right. one where you're the girl in like the space suit and you're in like some crazy alien. Oh world shit! Returnal, um, yeah. Returnal looks pretty good. Yeah. Returnal. Yeah, that one's good. more of like a. That one's more of a. Of like a. A roguelike. Hell. Roguelike bullet hell. Yeah, it feels kind of like it, Dark it, Souls it meets whole... Dead Space. In a way, yeah, like oh, dude, Callisto yeah. Protocol, hell yeah, dude, I'm so excited oh, for Callisto <laughs> Protocol. Oh my god, I'm gonna pee my pants. <laughs> I, I literally am, <laughs> I've been holding it in. We're probably not gonna see it for like another two or three years, but I don't care. <laughs> y'all, y'all know that that's a PUBG game, right? <laughs> Apparently, like it's so within the PUBG universe, like motherfucker, it's in sp it's in space. Like this has nothing to do with Earth. Like is the PUBG universe? I didn't know PUBG had a war. That doesn't hold like any water to me whatsoever. Ever, it might be like a cute little nod. Is that a fact? Is that a fact or is that like apparently? It's so stupid because I don't understand. They're a they're a team working under the uh the player unknown team. So like they're like they're like an indie studio, but they're working under the player unknown battlegrounds team. Uh, okay. Well, they're probably it's probably just some Easter eggs. I don't think yeah. it's gonna be like I, I don't think influenced. Like like there's no story to fucking PUBG. It's literally just multiplayer. There, yeah, just, it literally nothing is. to it. It's just like you're an army guy, so go weird. shoot people. It's like so that's weird. literally all it is. It's so weird. Let's see. Do we want to do one more new story, or do, just, or do we just want to jump into what we've been playing? I want to talk about Let's what we've been really playing. <laughs> Corey, go ahead and lead the charge with Elheim. I gotta use the bathroom. All right. Well, Corey, on that we note. can take go over talk. this pod. This, no, 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 no. I can still hear you. <laughs> go. Quick, go, hack Corey, into go. his system. Hack into the main talk frame. About, talk about, <laughs> talk about Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, Corey. Go. <laughs> um, no, so I, what I'm currently been playing. Um, pretty uh it started i started out pretty obsessively playing but uh lately i've been kind of teetering off a little bit more um is uh i've been playing this is now a kingdom heart show says cog shrimp uh, <laughs> that's that's me um that, no I, that's me i i'm currently playing a lot of valheim uh just kind of going through that uh, even though the game itself is like pretty much only 40% done because it's a early access game, 
it's still really really fun and it's it's even more fun with more people and it's just like minecraft but with vikings um and it looks pretty and everything uh and i'm just yeah i'm having a great time with it i'm having it's a nice it's a nice uh kind of just open world game that is slowly but surely getting better and i can't wait to see the finished product um i know you keep wanting me to play it with you I really do because it's so much fun, Jose. I don't under I know you're trying to get your backlog done and everything, but it's really just a great game to just relax with and enjoy in your free time. Um, I'm willing to do it specifically because it's you, because I know those kinds of games aren't necessarily up my alley. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, if you whenever I, I don't like playing by myself, like if I play by myself, I'll maybe spend like one or two hours on it at the very most but if i'm playing with a friend oh i'll be on it all day like i i i will be on it all day long um other than that i have been playing at dead of night on my stream and i have been bonked a total of about 15 times in that game define bonked (laughs) uh so in this game you basically are exploring an old hotel Uh, And you are using this uh, spirit talking device to talk to the ghosts uh, that live in the, well, live in this hotel. Wait, what Uh, game is this again? At Dead of Night. And there is a crazy guy who runs the hotel named Jimmy, who did horrible things, who did horrible things as a child (laughs) and uh, when he grew into an adult. And so you're, you're basically talking to the ghosts of the, of his victims. Um, and you're trying to solve all of the mysteries of, the, of how they unfortunately died. Uh, while also trying to avoid Jimmy from taking his big, o- his, his, his big old cricket bat and bonking you right on the head. <laughs> this, has, this has some freaking uh, psycho vibes to it. Oh yeah, major this, psycho vibes same, and shining vibes. FM, FMV game? So is there like cutscenes with like actors? Yeah, actors? no, it's real, it's real actors. Hell oh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> so it's real actors are filmed and it's 3D environments. Um, it's very fun. It's very fun. I'm having such a good time. And so Monday is like where I'm going to be finishing it on stream because we're like literally at like the last chapter, basically. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's pretty much what I've what I've been playing. Otherwise, how uh, much how much is that on Steam, by the way? Currently, I think it is like fifteen dollars if i'm not mistaken it's not not too too bad it's not too much now oh question for you since you probably know the answer when's the new um map coming out for devour i I would love to get into another game with that i do not know i do not know i keep up with the updates as much as possible currently the most recent update for devour is they released some uh uh some um working kind of like working artwork uh for the new um person that we're going to be avoiding in the next in the next level which is an asylum um we don't know what the release date is but they are a small team hard at work on the next level and all we know is that the next level takes place in asylum and molly the redheaded girl who is actually the main character from the first chapter or the first level is now the person who's hunting you in there's, this next level. There's some concept art I'm going to go ahead and post yeah. in the uh, chat. That's, um, that's, that's directly from the store's uh, news page yeah. for it. So that's the most recent post was the concept art from Molly's character having been taken over by some sort of demonic entity. I don't know if they're going to have a new character introduced um, because there's usually four characters. Um, so that that might be interesting. Maybe they maybe it'll be a nurse or a doctor or like a uh, or and like an orderly of the hospital that is like a new character. Um, that that would be nice to get someone other than a cult member involved. <laughs> Can I possibly tempt you with State of Decay? Uh, yes, because I love State of Decay. I have I played a good portion of the second one. Oh, nice. We okay. You're already familiar. We we got to do it now, dude. I'm excited for State of Decay three. Are you kidding? Let, we let's play on freaking. Uh, I don't know what the party's difficulty is or whatever, but just like <laughs> every everyone can die in a second, and it's beautiful. We it, can lose a, all. It, if we lose really everyone, fun. it's game over. It's a really fun survival game. Uh, and I I only played it a co- uh, a good handful of times because I never really had anybody to play it with. Um, but it, it's a very fun survival game. 
I am very down to start a new community with you. Yes, let's do it. One thing I will say about Devour, just from looking on the Steam page. Wait, wait, is Ish, is like, it, what is Ish wearing? Oh, he's in a bear onesie. Tell him to come here. I want to see. Uh, Ish, you are beckoned to come here in your bear onesie. Me? Yes, you. You are live on this podcast. <laughs> wait, I need to see. I, I don't. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Uh, so we have a but track like, panda and we have a, like, a, a brown bear. <laughs> so on, like the, the one thing I will say there you go about uh <laughs> i love you guys so much <laughs> Thank you. i'm so deprived so i apologize if i'm not to my hundred percent you guys look beautiful i i miss murdering you in among us he says he misses murdering you in among us oh yeah we should get back on that mm-hmm uh, the one thing I will say, just from looking at the Steam page, because I've only heard about this from what you talked about, Corey, mm -hmm. um, is that because, like, you know, when like indie indie horror games come out and they're just like forgotten about and like the indie team never. Oh, about yeah, them. it's like they burn out, they burn brightly and this. then. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing I will say is that they seem to be updating enough to where they're they're like at least letting people know like hey and, and like they're telling people they're like we are a small team they're like we're just letting you people know we yeah, are a small no, team. they are this might not come out as fast as you as you think it will i'm i like because i feel like um scorn's team is doing this too and scorn only has like 10 people working on that really game. so it's like yeah oh, oh, wow. oh yeah scorn only has like 10 to 15 people working on that damn damn game like That's one incredible. guy's doing doing combat creation game uh like graphic development and like level design so it's like at least i i like when teams are like honest when they're like hey look thank you for supporting this we know you guys want this now we are a small team we know that this is not going to come out as fast as you think it's going to like i right. like the trans the 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 transparency from them that's really good like that's a good image that's, that's why i think like, hey that's why i think that the the three main multiplayer games that are still like really strong right now are are among us um phasmophobia and devour i think those are probably the three strongest like very inexpensive multiplayer games um because they are actively updating their fan base i would even throw uh fall guys in there it gets pretty often updates but granted yeah. I, this, oh, this, yeah. this, this, this is a story we haven't touched on but they are not a 30 team anymore they're like 150 that's that's we'll but save like, that for next week but like mm -hmm. from the start fall, oh, oh excuse me fall guys was like a small team of people and they were actively updating it and like adding costumes and adding levels and adding seasons. Mm -hmm. I just appreciate when these when these big teams or when these not not big big teams are honest. They're like, hey, look, we're only like seven or eight people. They're like, we know that this isn't coming out soon, but we at least want to keep you up, up updated on on what we are doing. <laughs> Oh, I have I have actually one piece of exciting news that I don't think you caught, Jose. Um, yes. We are getting on March eighteenth a Life is Strange reveal. Yes, I oh, did yeah. see that. Square Square just revealed that that uh, that they're going to actually reveal the next Life is Strange. Uh, Going to have a brand new power, a brand new main character, and a brand new setting. Brand new cast is what they said. Yeah, yeah. I'll, de new, I'll definitely be writing a little news story article for once the details are out. Mm -hmm. And by the look of the silhouette, because there was a picture of just a person standing there, by the look yeah. of the silhouette, and like if you kind of look closely, I want to say that the that the main character is possibly an African American girl. Um, I could be mistaken because it it could just be like a silhouette, but I don't I don't know. But it okay. seems that with every sing with every life is strange now they're sort of dipping into different types of characters completely. Like I, it's not always thankfully going to be like a white. I just specifically want to shout out Life is Strange Two for having good freaking Hispanic representation, where it's just not like I have a fucking sombrero. I love tacos. It's like no, the family's just fucking. Really, people, and it's that's nice. I'm just like that. Dude. That's me. That thank that's you for just having us just be dudes. Uh, 
That's a very early 2000s representation. Oh, uh, dude, you, you would be surprised how many yeah. fucking people, even in the Bay Area, still have that fucking um, perception of what it means to be fucking Hispanic. Mm -hmm. It's it's so fucked. And like when people say like, oh, yeah, it was heavy handed to like mention Trump or like have these fucking racist ass white people. I'm just like, yeah, no, that's, that's just fucking reality for, well, for yeah, people like me. It's like, oh, it's, yeah, it's heavy handed or, you know, stuff like that. You could say that. But it's like, yeah, guess what? Those people actually exist in real life. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I know I was, I was talking to someone in Discord. I think it was a uh, beta Meister over from um, from SCGC. Um, we yeah, um, they were they were talking about uh, before the storm the little in between game that they had done from uh, one and two. Or I think no, it was one before the storm, and then uh, Captain Spirit, yes. um, which is its own little thing. Then two, but I I never wanted to finish before the storm because I don't know if this is a controversial opinion or anything. I don't fucking like Chloe. I think Chloe fucking sucks. She's a shit person. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Dang. Dang. Like that, that is you you will literally get people after you she's a fucking <laughs> asshole dude she's, I mean, she's a shitty friend a teenager that's the whole charm of her character she no oh. <laughs> like i i can deal with her being like your friend like in life is strange one i don't want to be Corey. her what Corey? please what? do keep in mind that this is the same boy that that said that uh silent hill i walked back on it i i corrected myself mm -hmm. well then correct yourself now but well, this is this is a fact this is purely opinionated based this is this is pure opinion so it's fine you know <laughs> no that being uh, said it, life it, is strange gets on me um Sorry, one sec. Ish always gets on me about my choice I made at the ending of Life is Strange, the first game. Uh, to not save Chloe, I saved the town, which is the correct choice, by the way. Yes. Um, <laughs> Thank you. He, he chose to save Chloe, which is the selfish choice. So. Fuck that friend. She sucks. <laughs> Easy choice for me. I didn't do it because I hate <laughs> Chloe. I did it because it was the right thing to do, and she was meant to die from the very beginning. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> that that being said, I really loved Life Sarah's is Strange too. Be quiet, though. <laughs> You're talking to someone who cos who cosplayed. Um, uh, who, who the fuck was the main girl's name? Uh, oh, I cosplayed Chloe and Max with my best friend, so I'm... Well, I want to cosplay Seth Roth. That doesn't mean I endorse Meteoring the planet. <laughs> Meteoring. Well, maybe I do. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, no, yeah, but Life is, Life is Strange 2 was really good um, in the sense that they made it much bigger and much broader, and um, there was like six different endings to that game, too. It was insane. Like it was a much bigger project than they had tackled before. And then they follow up with "Tell me, tell me why," which is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, right. It's like, I so I haven't played that. You need to oh play. Oh God, it. please do! It's so. Yeah. Good. It is. In, it is installed. It is sitting on my thing. It's that so is good, Jose. It's play so that good. ASAP. Play that ASAP. Um, because that is like proper representation. Like so many games and so many movies can take. And so many shows. Here, I will literally throw it on screen right now. Where is it, it is proper. It is proper. Oops. It is. It, it is the yeah. most accurate representation right. of a trans person I have ever seen in any media. Mm -hmm. Tell me why. Right here. Install. It's not showing the icon for some reason. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> I love your background, by the way. Oh yeah, my. It's literally just the the oh, Nintendo God, Mario things You have at the bottom of your screen. I have a lot of programs. I got Chrome, I got Amazon Music, Discord, Steam, I just, Ubisoft I Connect, Origin, Blizzard, 4K Video Downloader. It's a must if you make essays. Uh, Epic, <laughs> Rockstar, uh, GeForce That's Experience, Streamlabs, Premiere, Space Sniffer. Very good for cleaning space on your computer. Uh, Norton, <laughs> Xbox. Um, I can get rid of that. That's just shortcut command. I like doing that. Uh, notepad and audacity to record this the audacity the audacity i, just, I can't <laughs> why do you have such a crowded thing <laughs> it's called efficiency I have on mine that's it <laughs> <laughs> 
I just that's all my age. <laughs> oh yes, what have what have you guys been playing? Um, I'll go next. Um, because I always go last and it makes me sad. Oh. Um. You know, um. I, obviously, I started playing Dragon Age two again because I wanted some like familiarity in my life, and I forgot how much fun that 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 game is and how much fun all your companions are. And Anders is a good boy. I like I, I like Anders even though I know I shouldn't. Um, it's it's not, I don't it's not as bad as I remember people saying it it was like it's I mean it doesn't look great but it obviously it looks good because I'm playing on a Series X and everything. This is Dragon Age one. Like, uh, two. Because of the EA EA Play on the on Game Pass, I was able to download it and play it again. Um, but I beat Sackboy and. Ed Adventures, my God, that that game is long. <laughs> game is so is it really? long. Really? Is it wrong? Yeah, it's like nine. It's like ten, ten to twelve hours. Oh wow, that's long yeah, for a platformer. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. Have you been trying to like a hundred? Have you been trying a hundred percent it, or just kind of going through the levels? So I've been co-oping with 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 my friend Jaw. Uh, we were we were getting all of the things, expecting it. <laughs> quiet Ex <laughs> <laughs> expecting, <laughs> expecting us to get a trophy at the end of getting all the stupid orbs there is no trophy for for getting all the orbs and we didn't learn this until we got to like the final world and we're like for the love of god <laughs> oops yeah there's no trophy for forgetting every orb and that's so odd that's like that's like trophies and right? achievements 101 right and um, we we beat the game. We saw the credits. Then there's three final missions after the credits to get the true ending. And I put my foot down. I'm like, I'm done. I saw the credits. Can we just play <laughs> something else? I was like, I can't. I cannot take this anymore. That's giving me. We. Huh? I was just gonna say that's giving me fucking Valhalla flashbacks. Yeah. It's like, oh god. Um, and we started Man of Madon. We're gonna play through all the dark, all the dark pictures games because he, because he has played through all of them up up to this point. So I'm basically playing the main story. He's doing the side stuff. So like, I'm playing all the main characters and doing all the main story stuff. So I'm, I think I'm pretty much gonna have all the like main choices. I think, uh, from what he told told me, I'm gonna have pretty much all the main choices. He's just gonna do all the like stuff. It's it's pretty fairly split. None of it's really side stuff. Well, like he's like he's doing the stuff that he deems not as important. I don't know. Corey did a lot of important things to my characters. <laughs> so I'm like, it? Okay, again, Jose, it was a team effort. You can't just blame me. So like, so like as an as an example. I did. I did the uh, diving stuff. He did the up top boat stuff. So, so like I was doing all that main stuff. I proposed. Uh, I said yes. I did all that shit. Um, but after that, we're gonna do little hope afterwards because I really want to get to House House of Ashes so badly. That looks like the descent mixed with the cave, and I'm fucking here for it. Well, it's, it's, I mean, you have some time. It's not coming out till like October. Yeah, but like, so. yeah. I mean, no offense to man to man of Madonna as a as a premise. I'm just don't. I'm not a fan of haunted ship stories or like ghost ship stories. I feel yeah. Or like weird games. Ghost weird ship stories. stories. There's this cool That's ghost ship story, story called Ghost Ship. Any any story that has to deal with a ship and some supernatural shit going on. You ship, ship people. You ship people all the time. I do, but it's yes, like it kind of bores me. There were totally uh, ghosts on that ship. One hundred percent, totally ghosts. I just I'm tired of horror <laughs> stuff taking place on ships for some weird <laughs> fuck reason. It's just not interesting to me. So I'm playing this one just so I could get to Little Hope because that looks like something interesting to me. Oh yeah. While then, House of House of Ashes looks right up my fucking alley. Apparently, it has it has Ashley Tisdale in it too. So like the high school music. Oh, dude, that's going to be sweet. That's right? like, I'm like, all right, I'm cool. That's but a sweet I, life I, right there. <laughs> I like I like Man of Madon so far. Uh, the characters seem a lot of fun. and I really don't hate anybody yet, but I feel like that's going to change very soon. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, I fucking hate this person. But like I loved Until Dawn so much when that came out. So Jaw actually warned me going in. He's like, look, this is not as good as Until Until Dawn is. I'm just warning you now. And, and I know you guys talked 
about it. So I knew going in, it wasn't going to be like on that level. So like I went in with my expectations kind of lower. So I'm hoping it does something that raises them again. That'll be like, oh, cool. Another super great, super massive. What I will say, though, is I loved how they started with a heavy metal remix of like, you know, like an old song like they did with Until Dawn. I am here for that shit. I am here for it. Though I feel like nothing can top. Oh, what the fuck was the Until Dawn song? It was uh, like, Oh Death. I think they yeah, do a couple I different like renditions nothing, of it. I feel like nothing's gonna top that cover of Oh Death for Until, for Until Dawn. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, you know, this is this is fine. Um, and then really quick, I started Bravely Default too, just for the hell of it. Oh my god, that game is hard, and I'm playing on easy. Like I did. I, I, I had a hard time playing the. Fight. I had a hard time playing the demo and I just like gave up. I was like, this game yeah. is difficult. <laughs> I did one open, open world fight and I almost lost everybody. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'm on easy. Yeah, the, the, the difficulty on that game is like broken. I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to, what else was I going to say? Oh, uh, Square, Square Enix is going to take my $250 soon for that near collector's edition. And I'm not ready for it. I'm gonna be broke. <laughs> I'm gonna be fucking broke. <sighs> but uh, no, I mean, other than that, uh, please go and download the System Shock remake demo. That's on Steam now. It's free. It's free to download. It's really fucking good. And the game finally has a date. It's coming out in like June or July. Oh, you just reminded me. I need to download the um that one game that uh, what was it? It's basically kind of like. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics meets um, oh, Octopath uh, Traveler. Project Triangle? Yes, Project Triangle. I, just, I need to download the demo for that. Yeah, Project Triangle. Uh, I got I to gotta download that because I got to try it. Because uh, I think um, Blaine wanted to talk about I think it was Blaine. Blaine is so in love with Project Triangle strategy. Yeah, it was Blaine who wanted to know my opinion on it because I loved Octopath Traveler, but she um, wasn't sure what I would think about this because I haven't really played a field tactics type game like this before so oh and jose i don't know if you want to talk about this julie with me but we started playing valorant uh, oh yes played that for the first time yesterday i i, I just want to shout out i put out a poll asking people how they think how they thought I, I would do i put like mlg uninstall the game cry like a baby and then there, there was something else but, but most of it was saying, like, just uninstall the game. That's how bad you're going to suck. Uh, I got fucking MVP the second match we did. I got, Hell I yeah. got over 30 kills over two games. Sarah, I have you... To, uh, I have to admit something. I Because I saw you guys playing Valorant, I downloaded it last night and played through oh. the tutorial. Corey, we need to play. I'm not sure how to feel about it because I, I the reason yeah, I have I the reason I haven't played Valorant s until now is because it felt like just another generic first person team based shooter. It's basically Counter Strike with Overwatch abilities, and it's it's a really weird transition, especially since like the shooter I played the most growing up was Halo Three, and like one of the core strategies like. This is just kind of a general controller thing where you have to move while you're shooting to like make for a little micro adjustment so you can be accurate. Like Halo in particular is just like you need to be jumping around like a jackass so people can't shoot at you. Uh, Counter Strike and Valorant are the complete fucking opposites. You got to stand so fucking still in order to hit anything. Yeah, it's it, it was a weird transition for me as someone who when I play World of Warcraft people get mad at me because I'll like I'll be like I'll be like walking every while like taking and people are like can you please keep the enemy to one spot when i have this habit of just constantly moving so with valorant i've had to learn to not constantly move but uh yeah we did we did pretty damn good suck. uh we won both the rounds that we played uh we teamed up with our friend storm at atma and her roommate i feel bad I don't uh kellen a nice guy uh it, yeah we ended up rocking it and again you said that that People voted that you were going to do bad. You were MVP the uh, second round. First time playing. Good. I said it wasn't good. I got over 30 plus kills over two. I earned that dab, Corey. <laughs> no matter how much you dab, it will never be cool again. We surprisingly did very good. And I swear I wasn't smurfing. Oh, you guys sorry. were like, oh, you never played this. Wait, Corey, back me up on this. Have you seen the hustling episode of Drake and Josh? Remind me. 
where they're where they're playing pool and then Josh is like stupidly fucking good. Yes. Like, Thank yes. you. Thank yeah. you, Corey. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I, I I apparently lied, even though I wasn't lying. And, and at one point, Atma was like, and Sarah's going to carry the entire team to victory. And I'm like, no. I, I will say, <laughs> like, Sarah, good. I will say, Sarah, and, and don't, don't take this the wrong way, because just like based on like how you like playing single player games, you, you've mentioned that you like playing on easy because it's chiller. Uh, you, you played Valorant. You are fucking vicious. You are so fucking good at it. Like, I'm watching you, like, when I'm dead. I'm seeing exactly what you're doing. Like, Sarah's a fucking murderer. I I swear I'm not good. I've been playing it at at work on my, like, off time just because I'm bored. And I'm like, I don't know. And then Atma found out I was playing it. And she was like, you should add me. We should play together. And I'm like, I swear I'm not good. And then we all get together and play last night. And at work, when I barely get three three kills around, I'm getting 18 and like okay. 16 and i'm like hidden, i'm like what is kills, crouching so, crouching sarah hidden shooter <laughs> and, and i'm like and, and like jose can actually attest to this he was like he was like spe spectating me whenever he would die i was popping headshot after headshot and not even trying like okay you know, i was just popping you're, I, just I, good at, popping you're good at clicking off. their heads is what it is you're really good at clicking heads no i just like this dude with the bow <laughs> because he's hot oh okay Oh, yeah, <laughs> your your thirst has has won you this round. <laughs> I, I know I brought it up, but rounds, apparently, I know I brought it up yesterday. But for podcast purposes, uh, sorry about that tweet where I what would it say like that awkward moment when Sarah realizes you can't check out your character's ass if it's a first person game. <laughs> but if somebody you know, plays the same character, well, then you can check out their ass. Also, for podcast purposes, I'm I I'm sorry that I yelled at you earlier. Again. Oh no no, dude! This is a podcast. We're hamming it up. It's all part of the fun. If we agreed all the time, it'd be boring. Um, but also, John came out with a good point and said, "You still have Resident Evil Five, Sarah." And I go, "Yes, I do, John." <laughs> that camera hangs right below Chris Redfield's ass, and I'm good. <laughs> well, Corey, if you if you do play with us, don't let Sarah shoot her arrows near you. Why? Yeah, I still feel bad about that. So Valorant <laughs> has so every character in Valorant has has their own special, has their own alt. Well, the mm -hmm. alt has friendly fire, and the game doesn't tell you that. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if there's goes, it, and Storm just goes, "What killed me?" and I went, "Oh no, it was me." <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I don't know what the characters are in Valorant yet, but if there's like some sort of bear-looking muscle daddy in there, there I'm probably. There's two I, of them. There we go. Then there we go. <laughs> also, Corey, you know what? Really, really real quick. Corey, I'm going to send you a list of, of Valorant characters. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> is there pictures attached to them? Yes, there is. There's, okay. So here's all Valorant characters. I'm going to post this in general. Corey, I want you. I mean, my icon's obviously going to fucking give it away. But I want you to. <laughs> Find find the one that I'm incredibly hot for. Go. Oh, okay. Um, let me see. Yeah, I can't pull it up on my. I can use my phone. Now. Okay. I let's play this game then. Um, characters, characters, characters. Okay, so we got Astra, Breach, Brimstone, Cipher, Jet, Killjoy, Omen, Phoenix. We are playing a game live, live, live on the podcast stage. So Sova, it's Sova. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why was looking mother effer? <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> like a last looking motherfucker. <laughs> we know you too well, Sarah. I just alone. like instantaneous. I was like, I was like, who's an archer? Who's an archer? Ah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Leave him alone. He's a good bee. But no, like, very, we, like, very God, handsome. It's very dashing. We oh, also the two uh, bears, Corey, are breach and brimstone. So. Okay, hold on. Let me go back to the list here. Let me go back. To the list. <laughs> I'm going back up to the top. Hold on, breach. I saw breach first, and, and then uh, brimstone. Eh, uh, yeah, I'm not my type. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, like we, like we honest to God, we had a fun time last last night. I 
personally had a fun time last night when I don't normally have fun playing those games. I had an absolute blast. I don't know about you. I never have fun. Life is pain. Uh, sad. Different. I actually think I'm. I think I'm but, more attracted. Um, I think I honestly am more attracted to um, to Yoru and to uh, Phoenix. Yoru is hot. <laughs> Yoru and Phoenix are. I I don't know any of these names. <laughs> but um, uh, Phoenix was the fire guy, the guy who kept re respawning himself. But um, but like yeah, like we actually had a lot of fun. It's definitely something that we're going to be doing again, just because it was so much fun. And yeah, I'm I'm surprised I'm finding this game. But uh, Riot Games is still a shit company, by the way. Uh, yep. They're still a shit company. Uh, misogynistic ass jackasses. Um, but like, yeah, Valorant's fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, more, again, as long Valorant, as you can, as long as you can separate yeah. the artists from the game, that's fine. Uh, Valorant is one of those games. It kind of scratches that itch that Rainbow Six scratches for me, where when I die, I'm not angry that I died. I know what I did wrong. Where I'm like, oh, I was either peeking out, or I was making a dumb choice of what attack to use, or I wasn't using the right, the right gun. Like it, I at least know what I did wrong, so I can fix it. Right. I like games like that. Like games that don't don't like, like kind of like how people say that like the Souls games do that, but Souls games do it so heavy handed. Where it's like, oh, fuck you, you lose all your shit because you fell, because you fell down a hole because you were dumb. Like, you no, know, what Valorant does is Valorant at least, well, it doesn't exactly teach you, it at least allows you to go, oh, I saw what happened, and it even shows on the side of the screen what they killed you with, how much damage that they, that, that they did. Like, it at least, like, teaches you in that aspect, kind of like how Rainbow Six allows you to see a kill, kill, uh, kill cam after. It's like it's stuff. It's stuff like that that I wish more multiplayer games did. So like, oh, I don't feel bad about dying because I know why why I died and I know how I can fix it in in the future. So like, yeah, I am having fun. Valorant's fun. Riot game sucks. Uh, Jose, go. <laughs> oh shoot, dude, I have so much shit built over the time because I've I've just opted to skip out. Slow, slow. Um, go, go, go. Okay, shit. Where, where should I start? Uh. Let's, Backboy, Galaxy. I'll, I'll talk about Sunshine and Galaxy real quick. Actually, let me mark this time code. Quick one, one, many time. Um, also, so I, I beat. Jose should have seen Sarah's face when she, when she played as Carlos. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mario Sunshine is easily the worst 3D Mario game. It has some really poor level design. The last one in particular is so fucking annoying. It, it's um, so you're on this like. You're inside a volcano and you have to steer oh, yeah. a boat into the yeah. center and it is the worst like boat to like it. nozzle I physics constantly yeah. crashing. I'm going backwards, going to the side. You, you can't control the damn thing. I hated that part. That is the stupidest part of that game. But over I, if it's one thing I really don't like about Sunshine and it seems like basically every other 3D Mario game under the sun um, does it's uh it railroads you into going into each world and getting seven sprites in. Like you can't pick and choose. Like what's your favorite levels? Uh, Mario sixty four. Like I, I whenever I replay that, I usually almost always never do the last levels because I know those early levels so well. I just get more stars there, so you don't have to get more stars later on. Right. It, it's pick and choose. You improvise. Um, so, okay, the music fucking slaps. I'll give it that. Sorry, that's <laughs> there's, there's no denying. Like, whenever you talk about it, and I and like and like I have to have it. It's just like, just like the, it, it, it's like engraved into my brain as I'm like kicking fruit. Is it? I'm is like, it? Yeah, I, I, I think I I think I agree with um ramen in the chat. Um, sunshine is really really bad. But yeah, it is the, one of the, my favorites because of nostalgia. Of it is nuts. Mm -hmm. um, but it it is painful to get through. I will say that. Much. Yeah, I I would say that like the nostalgia for that game is so fucking intense to me. Especially the hidden because levels. The hidden levels are stupid. Oh, uh, there's no uh, point to doing them either. Yeah, like additional sprites and even getting the blue coins. It does not matter whatsoever. You just have to get to the seventh sprite in each level to beat Shadow Mario. Then you can unlock the. The I mean, last level. Can we can we at least all agree with Robin? Like I fucking agree with him one hundred percent. I have a lot of nostalgia for it. That that, that and Wind Waker. So nostalgic for me. It's insane. Like just hearing that music that's so engraved into our brains. Like it's and it's like 
and I think that just goes to show how Nintendo can make something that we because even now I'm 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 also playing it on my free time. And I'm like, I want to murder somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, be so fucking annoying. It's like, what? and again, I go back into Isle Delfina, and I just go do 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 do. do. <laughs> Music's so good. Like I'm just speaking like, oh god, like, I keep getting sucked in. <laughs> briefly speaking of like music and Wind Waker. I like literally my brain can't help it, but every time I literally see the ocean in real life, I hear the ocean music. The da 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 You know, that I'm just like, and I dream of myself just sailing across the ocean. They need to hurry up and put that on Switch. Please. <laughs> Please give us Wind Waker on the Switch. Uh, uh, they put it on the Wii U. You can put it on Switch. No, I'm good. I, w- I want Wind Waker. <laughs> you guys are getting Skyward Sword and you're going to like it. That was a weird time with Sunshine and Wind Waker. They both got emphasis on water. They just they just both made me wet when I was a child. I don't know what's up with that. Wow. Uh, gross. That's, a, gross. That's, a, that's not great, buddy. Because <laughs> there's water. What what are you talking about? That's uh you you just remind me of when I played uh Valorant t- t- <laughs> no. Network and uh, someone posted in in the chat. I am new to this game. Where's the good rule thirty four? Oh no, that probably exists. That's you. That's you. No, I no that 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 is entirely you. I was talking about myself. No, I was not talking about any characters. I'm just a wet boy, okay? Anyways, what else are you what? playing, Jose? <laughs> I will not stand for this slander. I was insulting myself. Never. <laughs> Never. Um, so after I beat Sunshine, I just moved straight on over to Galaxy. I really want to get to Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury, but I'm stubborn. I need to beat the games I fucking buy. And you um, messaged me and you said so that uh, you said that Galaxy is um what was it? what was the word you said? Uh like nauseating or yeah it's oh, it's a really it's nauseating it's all the time it's it's more so when there is like you're on like small little planets and you're like orbiting around and the camera doesn't necessarily move with you and your controls like whether forward down up that gets really mixed up gives me a little bit of nausea um the game because uh, you know is was, was originally a wii game it has a lot of wii pointer stuff you need to use in order to get star bits in order to stun enemies um, so if you're playing in handheld, that is not a good way to play the game. Like they, they, they made the standard attack, just a regular button that you can press, which is cool. But when you're like trying to do platforming by, you have to like actually touch the screen. And so if you have a, I'll pull it out right now, actually. So if you have the OG switch, which is not, I wouldn't say ergonomically unfriendly, but it's definitely heavier than like, than like what's comfortable. So like when you're playing, you have to hold with one hand and go like that. It's just it just sucks. Ooh, there, there's no yeah, way that, around that. That does not sound good. It, it's a freaking wrist killer. Um, so I just started playing handheld. Like I'll just put my switch like on the table and like pull the uh, Joy Cons off. But if you if you have a Switch Lite, I that's probably that it's not probably it, it is a bad way to play the game. Like mm-hmm. play with play with detached Joy Cons or don't play at all. Right. Exactly. Basically, what I would say. Are we also forgetting what? that? Uh, Mario's gonna disappear at the end of March because yeah, the yeah. If you haven't gotten the game, if you haven't gotten the collection yet, by the end of March, it's gone. It's just weird to me that no one's even talked about that part. Okay, Mario's now that's gonna be Thanos snapped out of existence. <laughs> okay, this this is definitely a controversial opinion. Um, <laughs> gonna go- I have I have not entirely enjoyed my time revisiting these games. Yeah, it, right. I felt that really hard when I was playing through Mario 64 because I grew up on the DS port of that game, and that game was like my life growing growing up. So I went to re to replay it, and I'm like, y'all could have just ported the DS version. It, it has so much more content in it too. It looks better and played and played better. And s- instead, I'm staring at a fucking square screen on my Switch. I need to hold the Switch like this close because I'm fucking blind. And like the, it does, it just doesn't play good. And like I'm like halfway through it, but I'm still like I was struggling so hard. I had to stop playing it because it's just it's just still in it's just still a Nintendo 64 game. It's not that great anymore. Yeah, there, there's just a lot of issues with Sunshine, and then Galaxy's probably easily the best of them. But I guess I'm just kind of soured that I want to play this in handheld because that's how I play yeah. like 99 percent of my Switch games, and it's just 
not optimal that way at all. You no, know, you know it's bad when they can get Darksiders 2 running on Switch pretty fucking perfectly, and you fucking jump into Mario 64 and you want to rip your Switch in half. Yeah. <laughs> but... it's like, for the, like, seriously, they could have just ported the DS version. The DS version didn't change, like, the original thing. It just made it better. <laughs> like, like, I just, I don't understand what Nintendo does and why they do it. Also, why is this game disappearing on March 30th? Why? Like, so much of it just rings of, like, we need an influx of money. How can we get people to buy this shit right yeah. now? And Mario, or not Mario, uh, Nintendo is probably the most infamous of all the gaming companies that's the most secretive um with their decision making in general they don't like to the, they do not like to explain their decisions to anyone period oh, ramen nomad uh said uh and i remember this the ds version had multiplayer too it had the bomb ass mini yeah. games too yeah and it's like i feel like what people don't realize is that when this disappears on march 30th physical copies are gonna fucking go upwards of like 200 dollars. but getting this game after <laughs> march 30th 30th mm -hmm. like good luck because you are gonna have to shove off a goddamn arm in a lake to get it yeah <laughs> like it's just it's crazy and nintendo knows what they're doing they fucking know what they're doing like it's crazy and it's mm -hmm. dumb i mean i'm glad i bought it digital i i don't know if i'm ever really gonna go back and play these games whatsoever but at least I have access to it, I guess. And and the stupid thing is, the stupid thing is, is that the Wii U, so the Wii U shop is still up and running. And I was just watching one of my other streamer friends a, a, about a week ago, and he was going through the Wii U shop. You can literally get pretty much almost every, like every single generation of Nintendo game on the Wii U. Including DS right? also. Including DS right now. Which is absolute bullshit, because the Wii U, as far as I'm concerned, is, is, is dead. The Wii U was dead on arrival. The fact that they have not brought all of that over to the Switch already is just, is just them trying to squeeze as much money out of the Wii U as they possibly can before they have you to see kill that it. The Wii U just, just uh, got a fucking brand new update. Did it really? Yes. It got my God. Like, we have to go. Well, I feel yeah, like some of it's yeah. some of it's also just due to like different operating systems, but it's fucking Nintendo. They have the resources. It's just whether they, they care do. enough to invest in it. And people would buy it anyway. Mm -hmm. Why not? Don't, don't tell Papa N N N Nintendo that I downloaded Dolphin and I downloaded Trauma. <sighs> How scandalous! Don't tell I own Trauma. Dude, there, there was. There was so many days of me going to college in a, at a community college where I just had my laptop open. I had a, an emulated version of uh, the original Smash Bros. just open, just playing on a keyboard, pretending to type notes. Yeah, it, no, it was a fun uh, time. Dolphin's great, except uh, I can't get past the fourth surgery because it requires you to use the fucking defibrillator nonsense. And no one's no one's programmed that on a mouse and keyboard yet. So I can't yeah. fucking get past the fourth. I can't I think, get past the fourth, the fourth surgery of trauma center. I think one of my uh, one of my favorite That's games, fun. one of my favorite games from like the original Nintendo, I will say, is uh, Star Tropics. But I only ever, as a kid, I only ever played the second one. So Star Tropics Two: Zoda's Revenge is a really, really good game. It's available on the Wii U store. But uh, but the but the first game is is uh, available on the virtual Nintendo on the Switch. But I want the second one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you have a Wii? Yeah, I feel like I don't see. I have a feeling that Mario's not disappearing on March 30th unless Nintendo is just still going to snap him out of existence. No, nah, I don't think they're lying about I... that. Or they're going to release the game separately and make you pay thirty dollars for Mario. They would probably do it sixty. Fuck no, and fucking Nintendo. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Got about seven minutes. I've been okay. So I got back into reading, uh, semi seriously about like a year back. I have a whole. I, I would turn the camera around, but it's not gonna get much. But a whole fucking bookcase full of shit I need to read. 
Um, I found out I am too much of a millennial. I can't stand reading a physical book. So I've been rebuying my books digitally. Like, cause, cause like, look, when I'm at work, I have five minutes. I can whip my phone out. I can read, I can read 10 pages every here and there. I can, I'm not going to carry my book around with me everywhere I fucking go. If I, if I had my backpack, like if I was a, if I was going to college still, I, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Mm-hmm. But I've been the first uh, digital book I've kind of jumped back into was uh, well, I guess it was actually Murder on the Orient Express. That that's a good book. But right now I'm reading. Uh, I'm going to go back and reread every single Halo novel. So <laughs> I'm just good luck. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy them. They're they're well written. They're good action books. Personally, I think I want to go through and actually get like the digital versions of all of the Resident Evil books and read those because man, those are the best. I want to read those. SD, SD I've Perry's never I've, was the best. I've never read them, so I really want to read them. Oh man, you're in for a fucking treat. <laughs> Going back to the uh, Halo books, like it's it's just so so. Fall of Reach, I believe, came out. I don't know if it was day and date with the first book. It was pretty damn close. Like it was a coordinated. Uh, transmedia thing going on but they give so much story and like lore and, and just general world building into the halo universe specifically f- through the book like it's this crazy deep universe and like there's been some issues with halo 4 and 5 making that complementary media into required reading and that's that's a whole other topic that we've kind I of wrote, gone into a little bit before I wrote a pretty good blog blog post on that <laughs> hashtag check out sarah's blog <laughs> that, that hasn't been updated in two months hell yeah but so the halo books i've only ever read was like the first couple and then maybe a contact harvest was somewhere later on um ramen nomad says the newer halo books are surprisingly engrossing and fun or fun i really need to dig through them if you're um, but, really into the halo books i would highly highly recommend the gears not- that, that is that's next on my list 100 percent people kind of looked past the gears novels because they were all prequels but they they give so much more like so like as like a really quick ex- ex- example when the woman who wrote the novels was like writing the first book she actually went to epic and was like what is ashfo fields what what was that and epic literally looked at her and went we don't know so 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 she basically took that like throwaway line of when Carmine was like, "Hey, you read Asheville Fields, right?" And a and a Marcus was like, "Yeah." She took that line and made it into a whole fucking book, mm-hmm. and it's so fucking cool. Like it just like it just brings new life in into that game's lore and that game's story, and it's just so fucking fun. So I highly recommend those after you're done with the Halo books. The uh, the Halo books basically do the same thing with like especially the first Halo game. Like it's just basically I don't know. We're on a ring. Let's fight aliens. Here's some Forerunner stuff. The books are like 99% of the story of Halo is like in the books. And um, so one part that's really interesting to me and this I don't want to say went over my head as a kid because I registered, but I didn't like dig as deep into it. So Fall of Reach kind of it starts with um, Dr. Halsey, who's responsible for the Spartan 2 project, which Master Chief, the uh, the Halo man is from Halo man, Halo man. (laughs) Um, But it's 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 a project where they went around the outer rim because they're having issues with um, they're not even insurrections. It's people like on outer colonies on outer planets, just like we don't want to be part of your government. We're going to do our own thing because you guys are imperialists. So it's like this weird like Titanfall. It it's it's also it's also oh, Titanfall. It, it's generic sci-fi stuff, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, wasn't it um, the time? <laughs> yeah. But um, so it has like this weird, like fascist and imperialistic vibe that I just totally didn't like dive into when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but then what they do, they go around and they they look for candidates for the Spartan program. They abduct these kids. They replace them with clones that will die off in like two weeks. Just like so, you're running around with your kid Timmy. Like, hey Timmy, you're pretty strong for a fucking six year old. Two weeks later, Timmy's fucking dead. Except it's not Timmy. It's fucking clone Timmy. <laughs> um, they they kidnap these kids. They force them into like this fucking brutal fucking training regimen. Um, they er- basically erase any trace of, like personality or hopes or dreams. Like they, they were like not all the kids survive either, if I remember. Correctly. Yeah, I'll get to that. I mean, but like, like, they, like a small percentage of them do. Yeah, I'll get into that. But so they're they're trained like they don't have a personality. Like they are basically machines at this point. Like this is even this is before they do the fucking augmentations and shit. 
uh, when they do do the augmentations, I, it's because there's like 75 Spartans, like an entire program, like half of them, uh, half of them die. And then there's more. They're just like crippled for life. They have to go into like non, um, non, non active duty roles and, and stuff like that. And like one of like, like Master Chief, like even the same year that Halo 1 supposedly takes place, he has the. He has the mentality of a fucking child, which is like, I need to win at everything. Like, there's no acceptable thing. Everything's a game. He like they use that word. It's a game to him. Um, so like when his friends get crippled for life, he's just like, he doesn't think like, oh, that's horrible for them. He thinks, fuck, they stripped away his purpose to serve the army, the fascist <laughs> imperialistic empire. I'm just like, dude, these books are fucked up. And it, and it's and it's weird because the game. And it's weird because these, these, these games don't fucking touch on them at all. It's like, these are war crimes. This is really heinous shit. And like, um, this, all this stuff was like put in place before they even knew the Covenant existed. This was specifically for imperialistic um, needs. Well, technically, the COG were sort of the same thing. But the COG was literally made to like take down like a, a, a rebellion of like people. And then the locus just happened. It was, mm. like, it was like it's and and talking about that StarCraft, the ghosts in StarCraft are basically the same thing. They were kids who were found out to have like psychic powers who were literally like ripped away from their from their parents just because they found out that that they had these powers and they were like experimented on and trained to be these like cold, ruthless assassins. And people realize that when they see the ghost uh, faction in like Star and like Starcraft, it's like, oh, they're women in tight outfits wielding snipers who have like psychic powers. No, these were like childhood abductees and like were like tested on and experimented on, and were literally made to just be soldiers and were made to be expendable. And it's like we seem to forget this stuff until we read until we read into the extended universe. Well, it's just it's just weird to me in um in the Halo books. Like I, I've read a couple of them, and maybe obviously my memory is going to be refreshed when I reread them with a more adult mindset versus uh nine year old me. Um, but they they seem to like drop this entire thing. Like this is like a fucked up thing. This is not something to be celebrated. And the books don't fucking touch. Not the books. I'm sorry. The the games don't touch at all. Like Halo books. Like this is deep imperialistic fucking fascist fucking military shit going on halo games <laughs> gun go brrr. yeah right i was just <laughs> so big, like, gun go brrr. And, wow. like, and it's like again, gears gears is the same thing people seem to realize that that the cog weren't made to fight lucas you know what i'll i'll, I'll give i'll give gears rebellion i'll give gears the credit that they um well, like, gears, like, they, like gears, the characters are very get... even the ones in the cog that they're very um not, not even disenchanted like they, they are hardcore critical of the government they're like yeah this government yeah. sucks but this is just a situation we're stuck in but like it really it really wasn't until four four to a soft extent and five to an even bigger extent that they even touched on that like before you, you wait, wait sarah can you verify this is true uh Rama nomad says the uh, terrans and starcraft were originally part of the confederacy with the confederate flag and everything uh i'm so oh. just a heads up Oh shit! That's it's so bad. Been a very Aww. long time since <laughs> since I played StarCraft One and all the StarCraft Two expansions. Let me just double check that really fast. But yeah, like the Terrans are like always seen to have like Southern accents. You no, know like, it's Terrans worse than rednecks. One who's like ever been critical base rednecks. Of the actual Terran. Yeah. Well, like Rainer's the only dude to, that's like ever been critical of the like Terran Dominion. But he he too is, is is like shown as this like southern space cowboy man. <laughs> so it's like I that that doesn't sound wrong. But let me just look really quick. Um, like like I said, it's well, been a you, while since I've read any of this. Is that, does that mean that like the Terrans live in an alternate timeline of Earth where the Confederacy won or something? Well, uh, from the official StarCraft wiki, the uh, Terran Confederacy, also known as the Confederacy of Man. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Uh, this is if Ben Shapiro became their president. Right? Oh my god. No, not even shitting Thanks, you. Ben. The leader of the Terran Dominion kind of looks like Ben Shapiro. Oh, wait, send me that picture. Put, put it in the, oh, put in the chat. Hold on. Oh, sweet. Uh, I, I need to see this. So, so apparently, 
Um, in this actual StarCraft lore, this is from the StarCraft uh, Reddit. Uh, so someone asks, is the Terran Confederacy related to the American Kim Kim Confederacy? Based on lore, the Terran Confederacy was based off of what fragmented history that they could find in in the actual databanks of Earth. Because I forgot that Earth kind of gets destroyed in StarCraft lore, but they save they save a lot of Earth's history. So it looks like the Terran Confederacy was based off of what they could find from Earth's history. The the actual details of the American Civil War appear to be lost to them, and the Terran Confederacy doesn't seem to hold any of their ideals or anything similar to to slavery. However, they 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 take many names and iconography from Civil War battles. Um, it it also goes along with their general redneck style, though I don't think there's an in more reason for them adopting that culture. So. I mean, hold on, I'm Googling it. Like, I'm still trying to look. I'll find, I'll find an answer, but it looks like people Even just so, like, put that together. This, yeah, it's you gotta imagine the, whoever like, wrote that into existence, whoever wrote that into existence with StarCraft lore had to be some sort of uh, Confederate this, sympathizer. This, you know? this, this, uh, this meme shit post would be more effective if Blaine was here, but are, are they red pilled and based? <laughs> or no, not Arcs and Makes. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to find, trying to find. But his, uh, no, his son just kind of looks like Anduin. But yeah. we, we got to be like wrapping him. up anyway. Hold on, I'm posting it in the. Hold on, I'm just gonna post it in this chat to make it easier. Uh, you can post it in Twitch chat. There, I just posted it in the group chat. There is the leader of the Terran Dominion as of StarCraft Two. Oh my God, he does. He does look. He does like, kind of look this way, Shiro. Like a yeah. <laughs> oh no! Look like Ben Shiro. He uh, totally gets his like ass kicked, though. He totally <laughs> gets his ass kicked. Like he yeah. he he literally like runs from everything. Like his like like you didn't right. you didn't like, defeat like, me. I like, I'm very calm. I'm not owned at all. You may have won. Yeah he, uh, he uh, yeah because Ben Shapiro ran from California because. Uh, his excuse was that L.A. is a dumpster fire uh, that he just didn't feel safe in anymore. But the matter of fact is, is that he's a trash fire in and of himself. So he went to go be with people who are like minded like him. I heard he sold his house to Aquaman. <laughs> Did he really? No, it, it, I'll, I'll send you a link later. It's a meme. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so with that, we got to be wrapping up. All right. Um, big thank you to Sarah and Corey for hanging out on the podcast, and thank you to everyone who's uh, been hanging out, watching. Uh, big shout out in particular to uh, to Sly and Rama Nomad. <laughs> Rama Nomad says they're sorry for poisoning our minds with the knowledge of StarCraft lore. <laughs> I, mean, I played StarCraft because it was a space love love story. I didn't, I didn't want any of this shit. <laughs> See, does uh, anyone want to shield their stuff out? Uh, yes, um, I am known currently as Celtic Scribe on Twitch. I, uh, if you guys want to hang out with me in my kingdom, I stream on Mondays and Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Fridays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm a variety streamer and we have a lot of fun. I have the spooks and the cutes in my channel, so come check me out. That's a good tagline. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sarah, you want to plug your stuff? Uh, Twitter at Sarah of mars with no with no spaces uh i but mars is in space I'm born in space <laughs> uh, i post i gremlin post i am horny on main and sometimes i forget that actual game game developers follow me and then i'm horny on main for their actual characters matt matt walker i am so sorry <laughs> no you're not uh, i know i'm not <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, again, I just had my first published piece on Movie Phone, which is super nuts. Uh, currently in talks to do more stuff with them. We will see how that goes. But if you all want me, if you want a asexual disabled uh, gamer who researches mental health in video games and is a gremlin on your podcast, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm fun, I promise. I can't be serious as well when I truly want to be. Um, but uh, yeah, come and follow me. I'm, I'm cool. Uh, I, Can you describe yeah. what the f I, I know what a gremlin literally is, but in this context, what the fuck is a gremlin? When I do shit like this. Just don't feed her after midnight. Yes, exactly. Someone's been watching Death Note. <laughs> I don't watch Death Note. Death Note's for children. 
Uh, wow. Wow. I know you're a queen of bad opinions, but you just got promoted to like em empress of bad opinions. Hell yeah. That's why I'm here. Um, but no, yeah, uh, gremlin just means I just kind of gremlin about. I'm just kind of here with like grabby, grabby hands, and I'm just like, again, I can be serious when I want to be. This has been going on for too long. R rumor has, legend has it. Legend has it. I can be serious when I truly want to be, and I promise I, I, I can. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and plug my stuff. Um, I'm here on Twitch. Sun the Game Session Podcast is 6.30 p.m. PST on Sundays. I kind of stream throughout the week. I'm probably going to be focusing a little bit more on getting through my backlog versus marathoning some other games, which currently at the moment would be Resident Evil 6. Um, but yeah, probably going to be streaming some Marvel's Avengers. Um, you can find me over on YouTube where I put up all the podcast stuff as well as the individual cut-up segments. Um, Check me out on Twitter. I post a lot of memes, a lot of sit posts, a lot of fun video gamey stuff. Good time. Uh, and you can also check me out on Patreon if you want to support me and support the show. And almost very, very close to being affiliate. We got pretty damn good numbers tonight. So indeed, all the closer. And Corey, when I when I officially make affiliate, you have to dub. It's the law. Is it? All right. I'm not going to do it until you're official. <laughs> Thank you, Robin Oman. Much appreciated. But with that, uh, that's been the show. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. Bye. Bye.